Hi guys, this is the next part of, what if Naruto had light release? I hope you enjoy. The core of the Konoha ninja, stood atop the Hokage tower, haranguing her about the importance of the scroll. It was dark and they were demanding the Hokage take a hard-nosed approach against Naruto Uzumaki, who had allegedly stolen Konoha's most sacred treasure, the sacred scroll of sealing, a scroll which contains the village's most dangerous jutsu. Lady Hokage, this is not a joke, this is a serious crime against our village, one of the shinobi informed her with a growl. That scroll contains secrets, that the first Hokage deemed too dangerous to be used by just anybody, another ninja reminded her. Tsunade narrowed her eyes, I know perfectly well why my grandfather created that scroll, she admonished them, if the scroll falls into enemy hands, it could spell disaster for not just our village, but for the entire world at large as well. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath, despite her love for Naruto, her duty to the village came first, she opened her eyes and drew herself up to her full height. In addition to her normal mode of dress, she was wearing the robes and hat of the Hokage, her eyes hardened, bring Naruto here, at once. Before they could form a reply, another voice yelled out, I'm already here, everybody in the room froze, then turned to find themselves staring at the aforementioned, Jinchuriki. Standing next to the blonde, was Anko Midarashi, another Kunoichi with rosette hair, and an Anbu wearing the cat mask, call sign, Nako, and I didn't take the scroll. That's right, Naruto, has been in my presence for the last couple of hours, Anko told them, Sakura here can testify to that as well, as can Haruno Mebuki, then added, though in her current state of mind, she might not be a credible witness. If you say he was in your presence, the Hokage asked, then why come here, that would be enough corroboration to unfound the accusations. Uzumaki Naruto-san, insisted on coming here, Nako informed her shadow, he wanted to prove his innocence beyond a shadow of a doubt. The other ninja present were astounded, with the testimony of two witnesses, and possibly a third, he would have been cleared, why would he do that, one of those present ninja asked. Because with my flash clones, I could have pulled off the theft, and deliberately allowed myself to be seen in other places to throw off suspicion, Naruto informed them, I wouldn't even need to be there, if all I wanted to do was read the thing. Senko Bunshin, have the same memory transference capability of shadow clones, from what my aunt has told me. Then why not go out and find the culprit yourself, another ninja asked. Naruto gave a self-deprecating smile, because of another ninjutsu I invented, Shin Henge, he reminded them, I can change my appearance, down to the last freckle on your ass, and nobody could tell the difference between you or me. Even a genetic test would show up as the person I was mimicking, then he blushed, there would be only one way to tell the difference, and only the Hokage and the hospital administrator, Kato Shizun kun know that method. Excuse me, Uzumaki-san, Nako added, stepping forward, there is a way to make sure it's you and not a flash clone. Naruto narrowed his eyes in thought, then shook his head and looked at the Anbu, how, Nako-kun, he asked. Nako looked at her Hokage for permission, who just nodded, unsure what Nako was talking about herself. Nako stepped forward, turned to Naruto, and bowed, this is just a demonstration, please do not take what I'm about to do personally. Naruto, still confused, was in the process of nodding his head, when Nako drew back her hand, and punched him dead in the face. Nako is a powerful kunoichi, and while the punch was not enough to knock him over, it did push him back several paces. He was holding his nose as a trickle of blood came leaking out. All the ninja present, were shocked, none more so than Tsunade, she jerked her head to Nako, explain yourself, Nako, she ordered, why would you of all people, punch him? My apologies, Hokage-sama, she bowed to her, then to Naruto, Naruto-kun, it was merely a demonstration, to show you that. Nako pointed at the blood coming out of Naruto's nose, flash clones don't bleed when they're injured, just a trickle of light in the corresponding injury, before it heals itself. So, does this mean every time I see Naruto, I get to punch him, Enko asked with a grin, cupping her fist, I could do that no problem. The other ninja present grinned deviously, uh, boys and girls, I get to punch him, anybody else touches him like that, I'll gut them, and hang their corpse in a tree. You can punch me, Anko, Naruto growled, the QB already healing the injury, if you want to fight on your hands. Anko grew serious again, Naruto has insisted on being subjected to T&I, and, and said, he will only submit to Morino Senpei, and Yamanaka-sama, she hardened her eyes, he felt any other member could be soft on him, 
and I have to agree, I know I would be soft on him. Agreed, Tsunade stated, Anbu. Two Anbu, one in a bear mask, the other a crow mask, and Nako, stepped forward, Kuma, I want you to take Naruto Uzumaki into custody and guard him closely. Karasu, I want you to go get Ibiki, then inform the Uchiha chief of police to continue the search for Naruto Uzumaki, tell her about how to determine a flash clone from a real body. Nako, I want you to escort Inoichi back here yourself, and you have my permission to inform him of certain sensitive material about Naruto, when he gets here. As clan chief, only you have that right, Tsunade looked at all of her subordinates, the rest of you will aid the search for Naruto and scroll, keep in mind they may have ditched the Naruto disguise by now, but no deadly force, unless he leaves you with no other options. Is that clear, their Hokage asked. Hi, Hokage-sama, they all bellowed, before taking off to do their tasks. The Anbu in the bear mask took Naruto into custody, placing chakra restraints on him, and leading him to a holding cell within Hokage mansion. As soon as everybody was gone, Tsunade turned to Anko and Sakura, please, follow me to my office, I want to know everything that happened between you and Naruto today, she ordered, then saw Sakura with an alarmed expression, rest assured, anything personal won't go beyond me. It was minutes later, Tsunade was sitting behind her desk, Sakura and Anko sitting on a couch to the side, had been talking about this afternoon's events, and the recollection of events had taken its toll on the Rosette Kunoichi. She was leaning her head on Anko's shoulder, looking worn out, when there was a knock on the Hokage's door. Come in, the Hokage asked, the door opened, and two men walked in, they were as different from each other, as night and day, one was wearing a watch cap, and a dark trench coat, whose face looked as if he chewed rocks like candy, for fun. The other had long, ash blonde hair reaching into his lower back, which he wore spiky on top and ending in a long ponytail, blue-green eyes, and strong facial features, which included a well-defined jawline. Inoichi Yamanaka was wearing the standard flak jacket over a black outfit, complete with handguards, forehead protector and a sleeveless red haori. Ah, Ibiki, Inoichi, thank you for coming on such short notice, Tsunade, greeted them urbanely, Inoichi, I'm sorry for taking you away from your celebrations regarding Ino's graduation, but this is something that couldn't be avoided. Downstairs in the mansion's holding cells is Naruto Uzumaki, he has been accused of something that could land him in prison. I will not contaminate your methods by giving you unnecessary information, I need you to get whatever you can from him, regarding his whereabouts at all times today. Inoichi, you are authorized to go into his mind, don't forget what you might find in there, and there is also some top secret information in there besides the QB, which according to these ladies he knows all about, that information is information on a new Keke Tota that he discovered. Anything you discover about that is an S-ranked secret, punishable by death, if divulged. Sakura tensed up and looked at her Hokage, who waved her hand to indicate she had everything under control, also there is information regarding a personal matter, between Sakura of the Leaf, and Mebuki Haruno, which Naruto was a party to earlier today, that information is need to know only, and only you, and Ibiki-san, besides Naruto and the people in this room are in the need to know. Ibiki-senpei, use whatever interrogation and torture methods you see fit, Anko added, if Naruto is a cowardly traitor, then he would deserve it if you did your worst, she growled bitterly, and if not, well then nobody will say we went soft on him, because he's family. Ibiki looked hard at his junior in the department, you sure, Anko-chan, because those methods will leave permanent damage, not on his body, but on his mind, most don't recover from that. Anko looked down, then up into her superior's eyes, it's what Naruto himself said, he wanted, she told them, when, Nako showed up at my apartment to get him, he specifically, wanted you two to interrogate him, he said anybody else would probably be too easy on him. Naruto wants to clear his name, he gets plenty of flack just for being a Jinchuriki, he doesn't want the added stigma of being labeled a traitor too, Anko looked down, and whispered, like me. Ibiki's face became impassive, as he got his game face on, very well, Anko, he replied, just don't blame me if after this, he wants nothing to do with either of you, beyond what's necessary. Is there any more information you wish to give us, Hokage-sama, Inoichi asked calmly. Tsunade just shook her head in the negative, then we shall proceed, and hope we uncover the truth before our methods permanently damage the young man. They opened the door to the office and left. Shape of a diamond, running vertically, elongated to the north and south of the eyeball. 
He appeared to be looking at something with those eyes, we never thought about looking at me through a camera did we, old man, he asked Sarutobi. Still viewing whatever he seemed to be looking at, Naruto explained his theory, the different spectra of light, were some of the things I thought about doing in each of those circumstances, the least likely scenarios I considered, the further away from my natural spectra and facade you get. It must be a side effect from using a film camera, I wonder how I'd look in one of those new digital cameras, he asked absently. Everybody, except the Sandame and the Godime, were looking between the monitor and the ninja, wondering how, the hell, he could know what was being shown on the TV. Finally, Naruto moved away from the door, walking to the Hokage's desk, with your permission, Ba-chan, he asked, and she huffed but nodded, she had just had him tortured and though he had requested it, it was still her responsibility, he was allowed some leeway to do what he must to clear his name. Naruto opened her bottom drawer and pulled out the crystal ball, let's see what the perv ball can tell me about what happened in this room a few hours ago. All the kunoichi in the room looked at the third, hard, who looked like a little boy, caught stealing cookies, with his head ducked, arms behind his back, and towing the carpet. Naruto began concentrating, feeling the molecules moving through the air, the floor, everything that was in the office, except the people currently inside it, then going deeper to the atoms, further to the electron shells, and deeper into the atomic nuclei. The nuclei and electrons began releasing photons, at first in the form of gamma and X-rays, then he began slowing the oscillations of the photons, and lengthening the waves, which decreased their photonic energy. The photons projected out of their phase of matter, and struck the crystal ball, they appeared in the form of beams, lancing out from the atoms and molecules that made up all the matter within the office. Naruto drew the light toward the crystal ball, making it bend around the other objects that were not in the room at the time of the theft, namely the people standing in it now, including himself. It accumulated within the crystal ball, until the ball could not contain it anymore. Naruto, the Sandame asked, what are you doing? Without looking, Naruto thrust his hand out, and with a twitch of photokinetic impulse, moved the light switch down and off, which darkened the room, and finally answered his grandfather figure, I had a thought experiment last night. What if light was one piece of a whole, it gets emitted from whatever its origin happens to be, and propagates through space and time, as a wave of electromagnetic radiation, until it hits some form of matter, and breaks apart. When it hits the gases, and dust particles in our atmosphere, it scatters, reflects, refracts, and diffuses, which is where we get blue skies, and why the sun looks yellow to us. It continues to travel, losing speed, impacting different phases of matter, which has a Doppler effect on the propagating wave of EMR. The waves compress as they strike the surface of the molecules, which causes the vibrational frequency of the photon to increase oscillations, adding energy to the photon, causing it to phase shift into different parts of the spectrum, visible light, UV, X-rays, then gamma rays, each phase absorbed by the different particles of an atom. Well, physics tells us that neither matter, nor energy can be created or destroyed, the same should hold true for electromagnetic radiation. Another spooky aspect is atoms, sometimes react to stimulus that is applied to a different atom, monks call it, spooky action at a distance. What if this spooky action wasn't coming from the atom itself, but from the wave of electromagnetic radiation they share, if they share the same light source, which ultimately, we all do, the sun. The EMR is connected to every photon sympathetically, through space and time, which is what causes the spooky action, as he had talked, he continued to work his light chakra through the sphere, then looked around until he found a blank wall, and released the light from the ball. Here, he continued his explanation, absently, what I have done, is reach into the atoms of the material substances of this office, and found the photons that were absorbed at the time of the video, Gigi, used to save my hide, then converted them back into the visible spectrum for humans, I could have just kept it in the ultraviolet wavelength, but I need witnesses to be able to confirm what I see, he trailed off, as the image came into focus. To be sure, the picture was not perfect, there seemed to be gaps in the image, uniform in appearance, very much like the pixels one saw on a computer photograph. Naruto explained them as the pieces of the EMR that were not absorbed by the office. What they saw, astounded them, because projected onto the wall, performing the same actions they watched on the video was Mizuki. He had a sneering smirk on his face, he seemed to be congratulating himself, on how clever he was, there was one moment when Mizuki's face turned bitter and resentful, and that was where Naruto narrowed his eyes. Naruto puffed his breath in relief, 
At least, Mizuki Tem wasn't able to recreate my true transformations, he must have been using the normal version, then he turned to them, before the Hokage, does everyone in this room agree that they saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing. Before the Hokage, I, Serutobi Hirazan, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the Sandame stated. Before the Hokage, I, Yamanaka Inoichi, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the clan chief, and director of torture and interrogation affirmed. Before the Hokage, I, Morino Ibiki, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the head of torture and interrogation replied. Before the Hokage, I, Midarashi Anko, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the Jonin of the Leaf said. Before the Hokage, I, Sakura of the Leaf, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the nascent genin Kunoichi confirmed. I, Senju Tsunade, Godime Hokage, affirm, that I saw Mizuki no Konoha, commit the crime of theft, that it was Mizuki, and not Uzumaki Naruto who stole the sacred scroll of sealing, their Hokage declared, then from henceforth so shall it be, from now unto dust, this is the truth and cannot be refuted, she decreed. Naruto then ended the projection and began scrolling through the crystal ball, until he found the image he wanted, a picture of himself, at a derelict cabin sitting on the ground laughing his ass off. Mizuki thinks he's clever, well we'll see how clever he thinks he is when I put my boot in his ass. I've found myself, he declared, then turned and knelt formally before his Hokage, Hokage-sama, I beseech thee, to allow me to arrest the miscreant, who would have besmirched my good name, such as it is, with the citizens of Konoha. If I allow this how would you get there, without being waylaid by every ninja out looking for you, Tsunade asked. We could go with him, they all looked and standing in the doorway was Uzumaki Yugao, standing with her looking impassive, was Itachi Uchiha, Hana Inazuka with her companions the Heimaru brothers, Kuranai Yuhi, and Shisui Uchiha. Yugao was dressed as a normal janin at the moment, and so was Itachi and Shisui, Hana, was a chunin, and dressed as one, while Kuranai wore her regular outfit consisting of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible, and a very broad material, which resembles bandages with a pattern on it similar to those of rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages and she wore the Konoha forehead protector and regular shinobi sandals. As his clan chief I need to protect the honor of our clan, which that bastard threatened, and as we saw in the image on the wall, he thinks it's funny, she growled. Naruto smirked, I take it, Neiko, and Karasu went off duty for the night. Yes, Shisui informed him, that's a fair assumption, then he winked. At this Itachi spoke up, with the ninja corps out in force, including all Uchiha police officers, looking for Naruto-san, he said monotonously, you will need someone with authority over them to keep them from arresting you, and as a captain on the force, an heir to the clan, I carry that authority. Uzumaki-san, he said indicating Yugao, called in a favor to me from my days in the Anbu, to help escort you to Mizuki's location. Naruto was heartwarmed, I'm glad my only living family member had so much faith in my innocence. Tsunade assessed them, and weighed the consequences against the benefits, for all indications none of the ninja in Konoha have found Mizuki, and really Naruto deserved his pound of flesh, she looked at the still kneeling genin in front of her. She looked at her elder, who nodded his approval, very well, I cannot go I must remain here, you may go get him, but my earlier orders regarding deadly force still apply, does anybody else wish to go with him? Enko looked at Sakura noticing her still saddened eyes, lots of emotional trauma for the day, I'd like to, but I need to finish moving my new roommate into her room, then turning back to the others, just let me have a crack at him once he's in custody. I would really like to return to the graduation party in honor of my daughter, Yamanaka answered. I don't waste my time on petty amusements, Ibiki answered, besides, like Enko said, he'll come to us eventually, he said with a sadistic smile. I will go along to make sure Naruto, doesn't go too far in his vengeance, Serutobi answered, 
I want him relatively healthy for his trip through T&I, and then enough time to recover for his trial, he finished with a growl. After losing two sons to traitors, one in war, and the other, Asuma, after grievous wounds from helping to quell the coup attempt on the daimyo, by the twelve guardian ninjas, Hiruzen took betrayal, very personally. A new core of guardians had been reborn from the ashes of the previous, and Konoha, had sent the married couple Kakashi and Rin Hataki, to represent them, though Rin was a reserve member now, because she was with child. If it was a boy, they will name him, Obito, for their fallen teammate. Thank you, Naruto told them all, then said, the bastard is laughing his ass off at a, shed of some kind as we speak, he informed them, Naruto headed for the Hokage's bay window, I can lead you to him. Naruto hopped out of the window, without a second glance and the rest followed after him. At the shed, Mizuki has just finished his latest fit of laughter, he was still transformed into the demon brat. When Aruka backed out of stealing the scroll at the last minute, Mizuki thought about doing it as well, but the thought of taking that thing down a peg after its performance was too delicious to let go, that thing needed to be taken down. Before it destroyed the village again, and who better to do the taking down than the very people it had fooled into thinking it was human. I wonder how long it'll run for, before it gets taken down, and if everything goes according to plan, I'll be the one to destroy the cowardly beast. As he was thinking about this, Naruto and the others who had traveled here with him from the Hokage's office, landed on whatever trees and branches would hold them. Mizuki had not seen them yet, because any good ninja knows not to go barreling into unfamiliar territory, they studied the terrain. It was not a very large clearing, and indeed the only thing in the clearing was the shed, which looked like a laborer's building for them to rest in between work. Naruto saw himself, still chuckling at what someone thought would be a great prank, and got angry, but he was cautious still, Mizuki has the scroll, so what was he waiting for, and it dawned on Naruto, I don't think Mizuki Tem wants to get away, very good, Naruto, Hiruzen congratulated him, what do you think he's waiting to do here? Naruto narrowed his eyes in thought, he saw the scroll laying on the ground, it looked untouched, like it had not been opened yet. He hasn't opened it yet, and in the vision I saw, he was too busy laughing to have read it, he reasoned, he's had a couple of hours, plenty of time to at least get a look inside it, then his eyes hardened, I'm just speculating, but I think he wants to get credit for finding it, and maybe for disposing of the QB brat. He looked up at his superiors, to see how they thought of that logic. Most of them were nodding, as if that was sound logic, Itachi just stared at the chunin in the form of Naruto, his aunt was looking at the true Naruto in astonishment, she was not there when Sakura and Anko were telling their story, she had gone off duty to change once she escorted Inoichi to the mansion, and Sarutobi was looking at him with a proud, fond smile, and nodded at the reasoning. That seems a reasonable assumption, but remember reason isn't always fact, there could be any number of ways this could play out, the veteran of three great ninja wars, cautioned his surrogate grandson. Naruto nodded, then got a devious grin on his face, well first order of business, is to get the scroll away from him, right, he asked, to all their nods. He put his hands into the sign he invented to make his clones, he calls this hand sign, the oculus, then whispered, Senko Bunshin, and one of his flash clones shimmered into existence at the foot of the tree. Sarutobi gasped, and as Naruto looked at him, he grinned, I've been experimenting with them, to use other forms of EMR, besides light, he told his research partner. I shall send the clone in to distract my former teacher, then uncovered a tattoo on his forearm, it looked like an expanded form of the Uzumaki spiral, only with dots along the arms instead of ink strokes. He applied a little of his normal chakra, to one of the dots along an arm of the spiral and extracted a scroll from it. Yugao looked at him with wide eyes, Naruto, you're not going to, Naruto just grinned maliciously. What is it, Itachi asked sharply, yet quietly, and they were all looking at the scroll now, though still utterly calm. That tattoo is where my nephew keeps the dividends of his Bakuyaku explosion chakra, that he uses to augment his already more efficient, explosive fuinjutsu, she told them, the closer you get to the epicenter of the spiral, the more powerful the explosion. Not to worry, Naruto said seriously, this one is more concussive than destructive, Ba-chan said no deadly force, and I'm following orders. He looked over at Kurenai and shyly asked, Kurenai-chan, would you please, place a genjutsu on this to make it look like the sacred scroll? Kurenai looked puzzled, but took the scroll from him, sure but won't the chakra from the illusion, affect the chakra of the explosive? Naruto shook his head, 
I developed this level of explosive scrolls, specifically for sabotage missions and the like, so I added a barrier line to prevent other chakra from corrupting the seal of the explosive. Kurunai nodded and went to work constructing the genjutsu Naruto needed, but someone else had an issue with his choice, why didn't you ask me to do it, I'm known for being good with genjutsu, too, Shisui asked in faux petulance. Well, I know Kurunai chan better than I know you, Shisui-san, Naruto answered, then added, plus from what I heard about your reputation, you're quite skilled at area effect illusions, and even personal genjutsu, Shisui preened at his praise, but your sensory genjutsu lack a certain subtlety, they have a bluntness to them, kind of like a battle axe to the face. Shisui sulked, though it was mostly an act, his sensory genjutsu were something he has been working on in his training, and I supposed Yuhi-san doesn't have that problem. No, from what I heard, Naruto told him, her genjutsu are like works of art, and she can vary the intensity of her genjutsu in subtlety and nuance, as much as she needs to in all categories. It's why she's called the genjutsu mistress of Konoha, and you're still shun shin no shisui, Naruto told him, and there was nothing in his voice to indicate he was giving anything, but cold facts, as he saw them to the Uchiha. Kurunai handed him back his scroll, there was nothing about her demeanor to indicate she had listened to anything Naruto had said about her genjutsu acumen, but as he inspected it, he, without looking at anything but the scroll, said quietly, and she has pretty eyes to boot. Naruto, without turning to see how she took his last statement, turned to his grandfather figure, who was smirking at the genin, and handed it to Sarutobi, here, Gigi, you've been around the scroll a lot more than we have, would this fool you if you didn't know any better? The Sandame took the fake, sacred scroll of sealing, and growing serious, inspected the object closely, looking at it from one end to the other. This will definitely deceive anyone, not as intimately familiar with the true sacred scroll, as I am, Serutobi assured, then turned to the kunoichi who made the genjutsu, very good, my dear, I'd say Naruto's assessment of your skills is accurate, to say the least. Thank you, Sandame sama she bowed with a modest blush on her cheeks. I have a question, Hannah stated, her companions were on the ground, sitting in readiness to do their mistress's bidding, they all looked at her to go on, we've been sitting on this tree having a grand old time, talking like we're at a family restaurant. Why hasn't Mizuki been alerted to our presence, she asked, he may not be the most competent ninja out there, but he is a chunin. Before the others could begin to wonder about that as well, Naruto answered it for her, that's because of me, he said. What I'm about to tell you all is an S-ranked secret, that only the Hokage, myself, Oba-san, and Sandame Gigi, have been privy to, and now maybe Sakura-chan, Enko-chan, Morino-san, and Yamanaka-san, they all nodded for him to continue, I have a Keke Tota that allows me to control electromagnetic radiation, or what is commonly known as light. I won't go into detail, but what is relevant here is that I have an M field, that I can project around me like a bubble. I can convert it to different wavelengths along the spectrum, Tonight while we've been coming up with our plan, and bantering, I converted it to the microwave bandwidth. Microwaves don't have much use as far as we know, he said indicating himself, Yugao, and Hiruzen, the latter two just nodded, but we've discovered that they have the ability to disrupt sound waves. When we landed here on the tree, I projected my M field to encompass this tree, and the microwaves have been channeling the sound waves coming from this tree, into the ground. They all looked at each other, but before they could continue talking, the former Hokage, the leader of this mission because of his seniority ordered, let's get back on mission, now isn't the time for scientific inquiry. Hi, Sandame sama they answered. Naruto pointed his fingers at his own Kidogen, I'm deactivating my dojutsu, when I do, I cannot maintain this wavelength with my M field, so ninja stealth after that, understand. The rest of them nodded in understanding, Naruto signaled his clone to get his attention, who looked at him and his creator, made a slashing motion and deactivated their eyes of luminance. Then Naruto signaled his clone to start the op, and the clone began to act the part of the distressed fugitive. Naruto came running into the clearing, looking like he had been running for quite some time. He entered the clearing, breathing only a little heavily, when he spotted his duplicate and stepped back in shock. What? What is this? Flash Naruto yelled out in distress, taking a step back in horror. Naruto Mizuki just grinned at his dupe's terror-stricken face, relishing the torment coming from the apparent nine tails, he stood up and his grin turned smug, this is the end for you, Kyubi no Kitsun, you may have everyone else deceived, but you will never fool me, monster. There was a puff of smoke, 
and the fake Naruto became the real Mizuki, he was wearing the same smug expression he had during his henge. Mizuki was in standard shinobi garb, but had added two giant, four-pointed shuriken, they were called Fuma Shuriken, named after an obscure clan in Gohan no Kuni. I will be seen as a hero, he began gloating, maybe not by that whore of a Hokage, if she or that old man before her, had been willing to overlook that mask you wear in the form of a child, they might have been able to dispose of you, properly. But what can we expect from a Kunoichi whore, and a doddering old fool, who should have been put out to pasture long before now? What are you talking about, Mizuki-sensei, Flash Naruto asked trying to look ignorant of what the bastard was saying about the fox. You still wish to pretend, fox, even now, Mizuki wondered in astonishment, then in a more serious voice, added, fine, I'll humor this farce of yours for a moment. Do you want to know why almost every person in this village despises you, he asked, Mizuki was relishing his perceived victory so much that he failed to notice the shimmer at his feet. Naruto had stealthily substituted his explosive scroll for the real scroll and handed it over to the Sandame. Now that the official part of the mission is over, Naruto can get on with collecting his payment for the mission, Mizuki's hide. This whole village has been lying to you, Mizuki stated grandly, since the Hokage's decree, 12 years ago. What decree? Flash Naruto asked, expressing his fear of the answer he already knew, needing to buy time to make sure their ruse worked. Everyone knows except you. Naruto, Mizuki proclaimed with a leer, the decree forbids anyone from revealing actually the demon fox, that attacked Konoha, 12 years ago. F. Naruto's eyes became surprised, the nine-tailed fox spirit, that killed mine and so many others' parents, children, spouses, has taken you over. I mean, how a child can hope to fight the power of an entity like that is inconceivable. It is inevitable, that the fox would invade the body and mind of that child you inhabit, Mizuki's face actually became sympathetic, that boy whose body you invaded, monster, is unfortunately a victim of circumstance, his frail body is now your great weakness, Mizuki took the giant wheels of death from his back, preparing for battle, and when I finally prove who you are, then the beautiful Yugao, you have tricked into believing she was related to you, will finally know the truth, nine tails. Up in the tree, the violet Uzumaki made a slight gagging noise, and when all but Naruto looked at her, she was holding a hand over her mouth to prevent herself from retching. When that happens, she will see, that me and only me is the right man for her to be with, and she will drop the walking cough in ninja. Mizuki ridiculed Hayate Gekko, who had an incurable cough, and those who did not respect him or his skills, often an out-of-ear range of Yugao, called him cough in ninja, which sounded like cough in ninja. F. Naruto appeared to have been horrified by what Mizuki was telling him, seemed to be lost in thought, when a malicious grin bloomed on Mizuki's face, and now that you know, it's time to fix the mistake left to us by the fourth Hokage, as he said that, Mizuki took a twisting, loping lunge, flinging one of the giant stars directly at the Flash clone of Naruto. At the last minute, the clone put up his hand, and extended his magnetic chakra that attached to the metal of the shuriken, halting it in midair, it was still spinning with the angular momentum the Chunin imparted upon it. Mizuki was surprised by the move, but figuring the creature's action a fluke, continued his own motion and threw his remaining shuriken at the creature. Flash Naruto, added a little more angular momentum by increasing the rate of the shuriken's spin, using a touch more magnetic energy to one side, before releasing the Fuma shuriken, sending it back the way it came. The first shuriken, intersected with the second, but because the first shuriken was spinning, and also moving faster than the second shuriken, thus increasing mass, the first Fuma sheared through the second, like the Raijin no Ken through butter. The first one was also destroyed, and there was shrapnel flying, the real Naruto used his M field to protect those in the tree with him, just in case. Flash Naruto and Mizuki were not so lucky, the Chunin covered his head with his arms, and was spared any vital damage, though his arms were festooned with metallic bits, his body was also hit, but his Chunin flak jacket protected him from any injuries. F Naruto was likewise injured, but of course no blood came from any wounds, only a cascade of light emanated from his wounds, and as he casually looked down at his body, and Mizuki looked at it in horror, the clone looked back up at his foe, and said, and now I leave you with a snap, he quipped, the clone brought his fingers up and snapped them, while accessing the explosive chakra in the explosive scroll, only a few feet behind the chunin, the A boom. The scroll behind the chunin exploded, and it felt like the QB himself hitting him in the back, as it threw Mizuki forward, hard, 
and the Flash clone dissolves into a pool of bright, almost angelic light. Mizuki lay in a sprawled out position, he was totally disoriented from the concussive energy from the bomb. There was a blur of motion as all the ninja in the tree appeared next to Mizuki's prone form, Naruto had appeared with the other ninja with a plasma blade in each hand. These were expressions of Naruto's third Keke Genkai, plasma release, there were others, but this was Naruto's go to jutsu, because of how versatile they were to any situation. Depending on how Naruto excited the electrons in them, plasma blades could be used as a virtually unstoppable blade, or an unbreakable bludgeon and he could alternate between these states instantly. Naruto looked down at the Chunin, who was still recovering from the explosion. Naruto's disgust for the man knew no bounds, and he wanted to vent his frustration upon his former teacher. Today, should have been a day of celebration for Naruto, and except for the situation with Sakura and her mom, it would have been. This bastard has taken, what could have been a great day, and turned it into one of the most stressful moments of Naruto's life. He tried to take something away from Naruto that he had worked hard to earn, and when he had finally gotten his hit I ate, Mizuki nearly made all of Naruto's hard work meaningless. Naruto gripped his plasma blades harder, he was visibly shaking, then he closed his eyes and took a calming breath, then formally addressed the fallen ninja, Konoha no Mizuki-san, by order of Senju Tsunade, Godaim Hokage no Kanahagakur no Sato, I hereby place you under arrest, for sedition and treason, for the theft of the village's sacred scroll of sealing. Yugao looked at her nephew out of curiosity, wondering where his anger has gone, are you sure of this, Naruto Oikun, after everything he has done aren't you going to punish him? Naruto shook his head, as clan chief, you may exact whatever price you wish for the Uzumaki, he stated, you may even order me to do it and I will carry it out, but personally, this pathetic piece of trash has taken enough from me today. My honor, dignity, and happiness over graduating the academy, Naruto said to her, but he accused me of being a monster, and I would be, if I attacked someone who couldn't defend themselves. He has taken a lot from me, I won't let him have my humanity, he declared, my clone wounded him with the shards of the Fuma shuriken, and my explosive appears to have put Mizuki down for the count, I've taken my pound of flesh from him. I'm satisfied, Naruto assured them all, let the Hokage have what's left, he appeared to be finished, before adding one last thing with an evil smile on his face, but when I make my report, I'll be sure to include all of the colorful names he called her. That may sway her from showing any mercy on him, at sentencing, he finally finished. Itachi looked at him and for the first time chuckled, I didn't think you could be so cruel, Naruto-san, then sobering, and I would like to thank you and Sakura-san, for teaching my little brother humility, today. Because of you too, the last of my fatha, the former Uchiha clan chief's influence has been washed out of him, he came home with a somber attitude this afternoon, and really seemed to be thinking over how he saw his career as a ninja. Naruto and Yugao shared a smirk, before she put her arm around his, and turned away from the s rank ninja, my campaign to humble your brother, is not yet complete, Itachi-san, Naruto called back over his shoulder, the true humiliation comes next week, at team placements. Chose green, and went completely bald, adding a happier style, forehead protector framing his face, with the dual holster design and wore ninja sandals. Kiba also went with a forest green camouflage, which he covered in a brown leather jacket, with a hood for Akamaru, wore a crew cut, fade hairstyle, which with his Inazuka fangs, made him look downright menacing, which he loved, of course. Kiba chose a single holster, so he could add a set of nunchaku which had claws at the end, a graduation present from Naruto, it would add something extra to his fang over fang and other maneuvers of the Inazuka taijutsu style. Though he would deny it, Kiba was moved to tears by the gesture, and had trained with them for hours on end, to get proficient with them. From what Naruto could see, Shino chose the black uniform, a faded style cut, as well as ninja sandals, but could not tell anything else because the Abarame still wore his thick overcoat and sunglasses. The Uchiha decided on black too, with a single holster design, regular combat boots with the steel toe, which Naruto felt through his jidden sensing. Sasuke had what is known as an Ivy League hairstyle, adding a vest like Naruto to add the Uchiha crest to his wardrobe, and balanced his kunai holster with the jute, a truncheon used by police officers. Meant for combating swordsmen, with its fork, the officer could hook the blade out of the warrior's grasp, and the thick metal bar, could block all but the most powerful blows. Naruto shuddered when he felt the steel, within those steel-toed boots, I give him three, 
maybe four months, then he'll be throwing those steel-toed monstrosities into the ocean. That or he'll be really irritable, because those things will be damn near pinching his toes off. Naruto walked over to Sakura, who was sitting with Hinata, and spoke to them both, Hello, Kunoichi Sans, he said with a cheeky grin, How were your weeks leading up to today? That there was another test buried beneath the entire exam, something I had to swear to keep a secret before I would be allowed to try again, Naruto told her, and what the class rankings are really for, and what they mean after the academy. What test? I don't remember getting another test, Ino asked, Choji had even stopped eating too, as it dawned on him, if Naruto had not been in this class, then Choji would be dead last. And please enlighten us regarding the ranking's purpose, Bug Boy entreated. Naruto looked at their sensei, who shrugged his shoulders, I'll answer the first question and let Uruka's sensei answer the second, once we know our teams, he told them, to Uruka's nod, the test I'm talking about is a stress test, to see how we handle the mild stress of the genin graduation exam. Mild stress, the Nara in their midst scoffed, troublesome, that test caused me, to miss precious moments I could've used for cloud gazing. Really, Naruto quirked an eyebrow, then how much wool gathering would you have done, if you knew the class averages, meant nothing in determining class rankings. You could have heard a pin drop after that revelation, and it was at this point when Aruka decided to speak. It's time now, to announce on which teams you will all be placed, their sensei stated, they all remained quiet, now not knowing what would happen, they were off balance, which was kind of what the brass wanted to see, how they handled shocks to their system. Teams 1 through 6, and their John and sensei were gone through quickly, Team 7, Hayuga Hanada, Konoha no Sakura, Uzumaki Naruto. Your John and sensei will be, Yuhi Kuranai, Team 8, Uchiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba, Abarame Shino. Your John and sensei will be, Midarashi Anko, Team 9, is still in rotation. Team 10, Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji. Your John and sensei will be, Uchiha Shisui. The class was not sure, if they should be happy or wary of the teams they had been placed on, they were still waiting for Naruto or Aruka, to tell them the purpose of the rankings. Now, I understand you all wish to know how the Hokage, came up with these combinations for you all. As one, the class nodded their heads, except Naruto, since he already knew the criteria for choosing the teams, well for one team at least. Firstly, but for two exceptions, all teams are chosen for balance, or harmony within the teams, usually using the three basic ninja skills, physical prowess, chakra usage, and kanai and shuriken acumen. The thought is that if you train together, you will be able to iron out or at least cover each other's weaknesses, to prop each other up in times of hardship. There are, but two exceptions to this criteria, the first is conditional, if there is a member in the same class from three specific clans, the Yamanaka, the Nara, and the Akamichi, also known as, the Inoshika Cho team, they are always placed on the same team, to promote good luck for the village, and so far, it's worked. There is even a superstition associated with those clans, that as long as all three remain strong and alive within Konoha, then the leaf will thrive, but should even one of these clans leave or die out, then Konoha is doomed. The three members of these clans represented in this class, had never felt so much pressure on themselves than they did at this moment. What? A. Drag, the Nara in their midst, growled. What is the second exception to the balance rule, Sensei, Sakura asked, but from the set of her shoulders, she may have already guessed the answer. The second exception, and this is the reason for the class rankings, Uruka confirmed, the rookie of the year, the kunoichi of the year, and the official dead last of a class are always assigned to the same team, and they are the flagship team of Konoha. Whenever Konoha participates in a foreign chunin exam, they're always chosen to represent the leaf in the foreign country. Right now, Konoha has two such teams in rotation, Team 9, with Hayuga Neji, the Rookie of the Year, last year, Shin Tenten, last year's Kunoichi of the Year, and the dead last for that class, Lee Rock, because their Jonin Sensei, Maida Guy, felt they weren't ready to become Chunin, and thus did not submit their names for consideration. Choji raised his hand, and Aruka pointed at him to ask his question, if Naruto wasn't here, for whatever reason, what would have happened to me? Would I be the dead last on the team with Sakura-san and Hanada-san? Baruka shook his head, you would have still been placed on the Inoshika Cho team, and the next to last position would be chosen for their team, he answered. Sasuke, finally caught up to what that meant, and voiced his realization aloud, 
then that means, the class rankings, it means, Uchiha-san, that after today, the class rankings, don't mean a damn thing, the Uzumaki finished for him. Never have expected an attack from the cliff itself. At this time, I know you all know each other from the academy, but I feel formal introductions are still in order. Will you please go first, Sensei, Sakura asked, so we can have an example of what you want. Kurenai smiled, of course, she assented, my name is Kurenai Yuhi, age 27, I have just recently been promoted to Jonin, try to be gentle with me, she quipped, to their chuckles, I like Genjutsu, my friends, and, she looked resolutely ahead, casting a careful gaze at the shinobi among them, he did not seem to notice, but the other ladies narrowed their eyes, someone else. I dislike perverts, those who see Kunoichi as whores, and arrogance. My goal is to become the foremost genjutsu master in the world, to change public perception of Kunoichi, and become a wife and mother, someday. Kurenai pointed to Sakura, who smiled, my name is Sakura, age 12, I like Anko sensei Naruto-kun, he's become a great friend, and Taijutsu, her smile widened to a leer, and cast her eyes to all three of them, you can be as rough with me as you wish. This caused Naruto and surprisingly, Kurenai to blush, you two get your minds out of the gutter, Sakura lightly admonished them, before getting serious again, my dislikes are men with fragile egos, the Harunos, and the way Naruto-kun is treated because of something beyond his control. My short-term goals include, becoming a Taijutsu Bukijutsu, hand-to-hand -hand and weapon master, supplemented with a little ninjutsu, and to become a medical ninja. As for the long term, they're pretty much the same as your last two goals, Kurenai sensei Naruto grinned, I can see living with Anko Oba-san has been a positive influence on your sense of humor, Sakura-chan. Sakura just laughed, but Naruto took his turn to introduce himself. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, age 13, I like Yugao Oba-san. Kiba, and all of my other friends, he said, looking at all three Kunoichi to include, all three of them among that last one, I cleared what I'm about to say yesterday with Lady Hokage, and two of you already know, but I dislike anybody who hates me for housing the QB no Kitsune, blaming me for the actions of another, he said in a rush, when Hinata did not gasp or otherwise show surprise at what he said, but whose expression remained the same. It was the other members of the team who acted with surprise. The Hayuga heiress grinned, like a child caught doing something bad, her expression was pensive, as she toyed with her gloved hands, I've known since he came to our class, he was interesting and cute, and well I had just perfected the use of the Byakugan, so I viewed him, she stated with a blush, pushing her forefingers together. The other Kunoichi were staring daggers at her, for daring to look at their Naru, friend and student, like a piece of meat, in the area of the body I was most interested in, I saw a massive amount of chakra, isolated from the rest of his chakra. I didn't know what it was, I still didn't until you told me, just now. I just knew that it was separate from you, and not a part of you, she looked up at the boy, you were you, the chakra wasn't you, but now that you've told me, I feel loads better. The nine tails, you say, and Naruto was astonished, that she did not care that he was the container of the fox. Tears welled up in his eyes, but he aggressively dashed them away, and looked at her, thank you, Hinata-chan, for being so understanding. He found Kurenai's hand massaging his thigh in comfort, and she said gently, go on with your introduction, Naruto-kun. Naruto just nodded, my goals for my career, are to perfect my bloodlines, become a chakra master in ninjutsu and genjutsu, a kenjutsu master, and a fuinjutsu master, like my mother and all other Uzumaki, even greater than the fourth Hokage. My personal goals, he said raising a finger, which brought the three kunoichi closer, are a secret. The three kunoichi face fell to the earth, he smirked at them as they sat back up and gave him ugly expressions. Kurenai pointed to the Hayuga to finish introductions, my name is Hinata Hayuga, age 12, I like taijutsu, and I'm interested in learning sensory genjutsu, I dislike my clan's attitude toward others, like get over it, we have funny eyes, big deal. I wish to abolish the caged bird seal, and the elder Hayuga advisors. My goals are as stated previously, and to become clan chief, a mother and a wife, in no particular order. Kurenai remained seated on the ground, and smiled, this is our first day as a team, I know it's traditional for me to allow you to go home to rest, after completing the genin skills test, but I'm still too full of energy. There is one thing I want to do before we head toward home, she pulled four slips of paper out of the bodice of her dress, and continued, these are chakra paper. 
They're made from trees that were grown on pure chakra alone, they will tell me what kind of nature affinities you all possess. She passed the paper around to her students, now, channel your chakra through the paper, I know that some of you have done this before, but do it anyway, please. Kurinai demonstrated as she spoke, channeling her chakra into the paper, which caught fire and became soggy, then to everyone but Kurinai's surprise formed into a vapor, this indicates that I have an affinity for fire and water, and the Keke Genkai, boil release. That's a secret between the team, and only a few others know about it besides you, including your aunt, Naruto, your sensei, Sakura, and of course the Hokage. I use it to aid my genjutsu in effectiveness, and is a poison mist. I'll demonstrate that later, now Naruto, please channel into the chakra paper. Naruto complied, already knowing what it would indicate, he got the expected three primaries, the paper split in half, with one side crumpling, and the other side crumbling into dirt. He got the three secondaries, a ball of plasma, then a magnetic field, which then exploded. And a tertiary reaction happened, the paper began to emit a blinding white light. Naruto raised an eyebrow and spoke, that last one is new, but not unexpected. What do they all mean, Naruto-kun, the Hyuga wondered, that last one was beautiful. Well, the first three, were from my primary elemental affinities, wind, lightning, and earth. Then my secondary affinities, plasma, magnet, and explosion release. The last one, is an S-ranked secret, but I will tell you in order to build trust, Hinata-chan, plus Kurinai-sensei, and Sakura-chan, already know. I have a Keke Toda. I discovered it over a month ago, he closed his eyes, sending light chakra to his eyes, he opened them, and staring back at Hinata was Naruto's Kidogen, I've named it Light Release, or Kidoden. Naruto spent the next few minutes, explaining some of what he had learned over a month ago, with the Sandane, and Yuga Uzumaki, keeping the parts concerning the Byakugan and the Sharingan to himself, but he did explain the Kidogen, and what he could do, with or without it. So, while I do have telescopic and microscopic vision, unlike Hinata-chan's Byakugan, I do not have Omnivision. Wow, Hinata whispered, you really are humble, Naruto-kun. Your Kidogen, can do so much more than the Byakugan, really the Omnivision is not a great loss, with your Flash clones, you could have them deploy the Kidogen, then when they dispel you get the sensory data they acquired. Kurinai got them back in order, you're next, Hinata-chan, indicating the paper in the Genin's hand, channel chakra into the paper, please. Hinata did that, and the paper promptly crumpled, before bursting into flame, but the ashes promptly began to vibrate, and a high-pitched squeal like a microphone being too close to the speaker. Naruto promptly stubbed out the paper which immediately quieted the noise. Naruto looked at her, no way, to say he was astonished was a profound understatement. What was that? Sakura asked in nervousness, which sounded like a little girl's voice, Sakura-chan is so cute. I'm only guessing here, but I'd say, that not only does, Hinata-chan have two chakra nature affinities, fire and lightning, Naruto opened, then looking at Kurinai for permission to continue, who nodded, but I'd say our teammate here has her own Keke Genkai, it appears to be vibrational energy, which only makes her the most in tune organism in the world. What do you mean, Naruto-kun, Hinata asked, sounding a little scared. I'll be brief, I want to allow Sakura-chan her turn at the paper, then we need to go speak to the Hokage, they all nodded for him to continue. Everything that exists has some form of vibrational frequency, this is because the molecules in these substances oscillate, each oscillation is unique to each substance, hell light photons do it. Sound, when it propagates as described by this oscillation as frequency, which is how speech works, the applications of this development are staggering. Like what, Naruto-kun, Sakura asked. Well as I said, everything has a frequency, and if you can disrupt or otherwise control said frequencies, you can disrupt the molecular cohesion of any object, regardless of strength and durability, Naruto answered, you could break apart hydrogen and oxygen molecules, which by themselves are unstable. Hell, the simplest applications are sound wave control, rendering your steps completely silent, or reverse it and you could produce or alter any sound you make. I don't think there are any limits, Naruto smiled encouragingly, you'd be awesome, Hinata-chan. Well as awesome as you already are, you'd be even more awesome. Believe it, Hinata blushed and demurred, why, thank you, Naruto-kun. Sakura just picked up her paper and channeled her chakra into it, the paper grew soggy, then crumpled, 
but then coherent beams of light shot out in all directions, those that hit them stung like a bee sting. What the hell are we, the bloodline squad, Naruto griped. Whoa, Kurinai stated, sitting three feet away from the rosette, those laser bolts pack quite a pinch, and I imagine they could punch a hole through steel with enough practice. What do you think that was, Sakura asked, looking at Naruto, who shrugged. I think it's time, we go see the Hokage, Kurinai told them, and they all just nodded. They stood and immediately began jumping through the trees, heading for their military and spiritual leader's residence. By the way, Naruto-kun, Kurinai said disarmingly, then leaked her key, but her voice became seductive, the next time you blow on my ear, I'm gonna make you finish what you started, he looked at her in confusion, so she elaborated, you're an adult now, so I'm just going to say it, she blushed a red as deep as her namesake. Blowing on my ear is the quickest way to get me to jump your bones, she said quickly. This caused him, and the other two Kunoichi to match Kurinai's redness. Wait a minute, Naruto said, as he remembered something his aunt once told him about Kunoichi. I've lived with Yugao Oba-san long enough to know that while most women, would be coy about something like that, Kunoichi, because they lie and deceive for a living, take a different approach to courtship. When they like a man romantically, they don't beat around the bush, and the bolder they are the more they like said man. The way you said that means, Kurinai smiled, that I like you, and given the way they're looking at us, I'd say I'm not the only Kunoichi on the blood squad who would like to have you between her legs. Naruto looked at the other two Kunoichi and saw them look back, just as seductively, oh no, Tsunade was sitting back in her chair, with her eyes closed, massaging the bridge of her nose. Before her stood her newest headache, the latest incarnation of Team 7. The sudden discovery of three bloodlines, would normally be seen as a boon to the Hokage, but when one of those who discovered their new Keke Gen Kai happened to be from one of the most temperamental and arrogant clans in Konoha. Who already have a Keke Gen Kai Dojutsu, the discovery that their heiress has discovered another bloodline limit, will throw a monkey wrench in her efforts to curtail that clan's entitled culture. She knew what she had to do when she raised her head, Tori-san, she called, and an anbu with a bird mask appeared in front of Tsunade, kneeling. Hi, Hokage-sama, bird asked, her long, black ponytail resting on her back, the armor of the anbu doing nothing to hide her voluptuous, female form. Please, go ask the clan chief of the Hyuga to come to my office, Tsunade ordered. Hi, Hokage-sama, the woman turned, and briefly they saw a pair of pure white eyes, staring through the eyes of the bird mask at Hanada, who merely looked back impassively. There was a slight hint of an upturned, proud smile on her lips, before she shun shined away. Tsunade keyed her intercom, Natsumi-san, will you please convene the elders in my office, as quickly as possible, we have much to discuss. Hi, Hokage-sama, was the reply. Then she turned to Sakura, I may know what your bloodline is, Sakura-san. I once attended the Chunin exams in Kumogakur, it was a show of goodwill, to let Rakage know, there were no more hard feelings for his actions from Konoha, at least, officially. During the exam finals, there was a boy, who demonstrated jutsu like you described from the chakra paper, they called it, Orashi no jutsu, or storm art, in common language. Luckily for the both of you, she indicated the two, Jen and Kunoichi, you have a teammate on your team that is nearly a master of lightning chakra, the blonde woman stated pointing to Naruto, who smirked while looking at Sakura and Hanada. When they looked at Naruto, he spoke, I'll get you both started, at least with the exercises that help me, but everybody is different when it comes to what they can learn. I'll let you two, create your own jutsu, like I have, he stated firmly. Naruto looked between the two, Jen and Kunoichi, looking back at him, who both nodded. There was a knock on the door, come in, said the Hokage. The door opened, and in walked another man, a Hayuga, this one had a tad more aristocratic bearing than most, he looked much like all of his clan, but wore very traditional, loose-fitting robes, and a brown haori with the Hayuga crest in the middle of the back. Hiyashi Hayuga looked upon his daughter with emotionless eyes, but that was just a facade, for truly his daughters, were the light of his life, both were strong, Hinata had become the strongest fighter in the Hayuga, eclipsing even his nephew's strength. Who was considered the strongest Jukin fighter in the clan, and with her Juho style, was able to defeat him. He was immensely proud that she had become, Rookie of the Year for her class. He, along with every other graduate of the academy, knew that the rankings there, were inconsequential, once they left school, 
but at the very least, with Neji of the branch family being rookie of the year for his class, and Hinata being the same, it showed just how strong the Hyuga clan truly was. Did you call for me, Hokage-sama, the father asked his superior, and bowed formally. Tsunade rose from her chair, stepping around her desk and returned his bow, with one just as deep. I have, Hyuga Dono, she smiled, then indicated Hinata and the rest of her team, it seems Konoha, has acquired two more Kekei Genkai. You know, as we all do of Naruto Uzumaki and the three bloodlines, he has displayed for us, Hiyashi nodded at that, well, it seems his teammates have their own bloodlines. Sakura-san has gotten the Kumo's coveted storm release, I may open Konoha up to them again just to rub their noses in that fact. Hiyashi and Tori's eyes narrowed at that thought, but it's just a thought, it seems the Hyuga are evolving as well, because Hinata, in addition to the Byakugan, also has an elemental Kekei Genkai. What? Hiyashi asked, in shock. They did a nature affinity test today, and Hinata, it seems has two primary nature transformations, fire and lightning, that surprised Hiyashi who looked at his daughter. She remained stoic on the surface, but she could feel his warmth for her, there was never a doubt in her mind that her parents loved her, and she returned it, but Hyuga were very private when displaying emotions, they only did it with their closest loved ones. Hanada may not follow all of the Hyuga's pretensions, but she viewed the stoic nature as an asset, her soft-spoken nature was a version of that stoicism, she practiced Zen meditation every morning to help her control her emotions. She even practices them during her katas for the Juho, while meditating, calling it moving meditation, and it helped her remain calm in battle. That she was willing to show her seductive side to Naruto, should have told him how strong her feelings for him ran. Tsunade continued, the test also revealed a secondary element, that of utilization of vibrations, Naruto explained some of those applications to her, though with it being an unheard of ability, she'll have to make any headway with it on her own. Hiyashi could not be prouder of his daughter, he very nearly beamed, the corner of his lips twitching a few times. Hanada and Tori caught it, and both of them could not wait to get home, and tease him about it behind closed doors, later. The fact that her father, was struggling so hard not to show such powerful emotions, almost made her want to run to him like an exuberant little girl, but she was a Hyuga and if he could remain quiet, she would too. She and Hanabi, were daddy's little girls after all, and his love was all they needed for now, though Naruto was fast approaching that level of feeling in Hanada's book. Well, the elders may have an issue with this, they'll see her as an abomination to the clan's future. There's such fanatics about clan traditions, any deviation tends to turn off their heads, he said sourly, I for one, see it as a sign that our clan, has so much more potential than we allow ourselves to realize. Hiyashi grimaced, which means, unfortunately, we don't have anyone who can teach her about her nature chakra, her fire usage, which she uses in conjunction with her taijutsu style, she had to learn on her own. May I speak, father, Hanada asked respectfully, she goes on at his nod. Naruto-san, has had quite a bit of experience uncovering and learning bloodlines of this type. He has graciously offered to train me in the use of my lightning chakra, and I believe, since he is also the practitioner of a new chakra release, plasma release, he would be the best person to shepherd me in exploring this new nature. Hiyashi scratched his chin, as he thought over his daughter's proposal, he also eyed the young man. He, like the rest of the shinobi council knew Naruto was not the Kyubi. That was not what he was worried about, it was letting his daughter, who he was not blind to the fact that she had feeling for the shinobi, be alone with an older teenage boy. Hiyashi sighed, then disappeared and when he reappeared, he had a chakra-coated index and middle finger poised over the boy's heart, as long as the only, exploring, he does with my daughter is regarding ninjutsu, he growled, or I'll reduce the Uzumaki by one, here in Konoha, understood, boy. Naruto had not flinched, as soon as the man began moving, he had activated his M field, you have my word, Hayuga-sama, Naruto stated, that except for sparring, I will lay no finger on Hinata-san, that she doesn't allow, nor will I ever abandon her. Naruto looked down causing Hiyashi to look down as well, and was shocked, because the boy had a glowing spear hand, aimed at Hiyashi's own chest. Each of them could kill the other with just a touch. Hiyashi laughed humorously, which shocked not only his daughter and bird, but everybody in the room. The Hyugas and even Hiyashi's emotionless exterior was quite legendary, except for when he found his daughter in the clutches of a kidnapper, he has not even shown his emotions to enemies. 
He has always told his daughters and even his nephew, that your emotions were one of the few, if only things on the battlefield, one could control. He looked at Naruto as his face returned to impassivity, I like you, kid, and I wouldn't have accepted anything less from you when I attacked you, he explained, anybody who is willing to stand up for those he cares about, even against others who care about the same person, is okay in my book. I can tell that you are a man of your word, and I'm glad you will be there to protect my daughter, in whatever capacity you both agree upon. Naruto smiled, thank you, Hayuga-sama, and as you guessed I will protect, and not a chan, because I suspect that if the situation demands it, she'll do the same for me. I can't think of anybody else I'd want covering my six, other than Sakura-chan, Kurunai-sensei, or Kiba Inazuka, than Hinata-chan. I must say, this is a lot different than how I anticipated you would react, Hiyashi Dono, Tsunade commented, I thought you'd be harsh and demanding like you are in council meetings. Don't read too much into that, Tsunade Tono, Hiyashi replied stoically, I wear many hats, right now, I am wearing the delighted clan chief hat, when Hinata gets home, I will put on the proud father's hat. However, the next time a council meeting is convened, I will have on my politician hat, where I will rub Makoto Tono's nose in the fact that my clan, can now boast two bloodline limits, of which, hers can only brag of one. Which is useless for reading Keke Genkai, he finished with a pompous air that was powerful, but also fake. Sakura giggled, and tapped Hinata on the shoulder, who turned, your dad is so cool, Hinata-chan. Hinata had a small smile bloom on her face, he's alright, and Hiyashi winked at her, but she maintained her best Hayuga bearing to make him proud. At this moment, the door opened, and three people walked into the Hokage's office. There were only four people allowed to just walk into the Hokage's office without knocking, five if one counted the daimyo. Three of those people lived in Konoha, the Konoha elders, they were the only three people, living in Konoha, who could question the Hokage's decisions. At the moment, the position of the elders were held by Sarutobi Hirazan, Uchiha Makoto, clan chief of the Uchiha and commissioner of the Uchiha police force, and Tuki Ichiraku, the owner and proprietor of Naruto's favorite restaurant, Ichiraku Ramen, which was now under full-time management of his daughter, Ayame, when he was fulfilling his official duties as an elder. Makoto Uchiha, is a fair-skinned woman with long, straight black hair and bangs hanging on either side of her face, to roughly frame her cheeks and black eyes. She wore a simple, dark purple yukata top, with a red plum hakama, and a light yellow obi worn over it. She was Kushina's best friend and teammate, even if they started out as bitter rivals, they were put on the same team together, with Tsunade being their sensei, and their feelings for each other as they progressed together in skill and power, grew until they became as inseparable as sisters. They had hoped their children, as they grew would become friends, but with their personalities being so different, there was never any hope of that. Naruto, it seemed was still looking out for Makoto's son, however, his little lesson about the class ranking yesterday, seems to have sunk Sasuke into a form of depression. Her ex-husband, the former leader of the clan, used to go on and on toward Sasuke, about the importance for getting top marks in his class, to always be seen as superior to the other members of his class. Naruto it seemed, understood instinctively that Sasuke was heading down the wrong path, in his shinobi thinking, and endeavored to knock that kind of thinking out of her son's head. Today was her son's genin skills test with Anko-chan, where if he were wise, he would start to see that Fugaku's way of thinking, toward his fellow leaf ninja was not what made a ninja strong. It just isolated them, until at some point in time, nobody wanted to work with them, nor even hire their services, because their attitude made it impossible to work with them. They either died penniless, or just died, because they thought they were more skilled and powerful than anybody else. Naruto probably thought it was just a wind-up, but it was the type of prank that made people's thinking change, either for better or worse. Tuki Ichiraku, today, was wearing his chef's uniform, which meant he was summoned during business hours at his ramen stand, and if one looked at the time, they would see that since it was just after midday, this was the peak hour for the lunch rush at the stand. Naruto felt guilty about that, but resolved to eat double his usual portion, when he went there today, once he was let go from his team. Tuki did not seem very perturbed though, he seemed to be taking his summons in stride, which if Naruto knew his friend, was not a facade. Unlike most politicians, which the elders, very much were, Tuki-san wore his emotions on his sleeve, and while he was deferential to the Hokage, was not one to couch what he said behind political rhetoric. 
something that Tsunade found, rather refreshing, because even her sensei and student, as informal as they could be with her, tended to have trouble getting to the point in some discussions. The three elders, stopped in front of their boss and bowed, which she returned, what is this all about, Tsunade-sama, Tyuki began, it's rare for all three of us to be summoned during the day. Tsunade smiled and waved to the genin team in the room, it seems Konoha is being rewarded further, by the development or acquisition of two, she held up two fingers, count them, two more Genso no Keke Gen Kai elemental bloodline limits. For Verity's sake, let us hope Naruto has been left alone by fate, and the lucky recipient of these boons, is one of these two lovely young ladies, Sarutobi surmised. You are correct, Sandame Dono, Hiyashi stated, pointing to the Kunoichi, in addition to the Byakugan, it seems the might of the Hyuga will grow even more than it already has, my daughter has two primary affinities, fire and lightning, and a new never before seen secondary affinity, Shindoden, or vibration release. Then pointing at the Rosette Kunoichi, who blushed, Hiyashi continued, and it seems Kami has decided to tweak the noses of Kumogakur, and award us with Arashi no Jutsu, the power they seem determined to keep to themselves, by giving us this quite formidable young Kunoichi. Damn it, Makoto exclaimed, I guess I'm going to have to hear you gloat like a maniac during the next council meeting, aren't I? Tsunade sighed, he practically assured us of that, Makoto-chan, a few minutes ago, then a gleam of malice appeared on the Hokage's visage, unless I make it an S-ranked secret, like I did for another elemental bloodline, that was discovered within the last six months. Hiyashi's eye began to twitch, then Tsunade sighed, no that wouldn't be a judicious use of my power as the Hokage, but I will make it need to know, and as for now, until they can learn to use it in combat, only the people in this room and those they live with, have a need to know what our kunoichi are capable of, then hardened her eyes, and growled, besides whoring. Every kunoichi and the shinobi as well, hardened their eyes at that, all of them have had friends and relations, who are, or had been kunoichi, and the public stereotype regarding their battle prowess was one that was hard to shake. To be fair, there are such things as seduction missions, which were only given to kunoichi, the goal being to get pregnant and bring the child back to a home village, usually to acquire certain bloodlines and traits for said village. Though it was rare for such a thing to happen these days, even Cloud, who were greedy for genetic strength, would rather resort to kidnapping than send their kunoichi to foreign territory, from which for one reason or another they may not return. Plus, they would be down a fighter until the kunoichi went into labor, and trained back to fighting shape after the birth, if they even wanted to come back, they could have fallen in love with their baby, which happened a lot. For this reason, these, and assassination missions, were the only missions that any ninja may outright refuse, and any reason could be used, from personal, to ideological, or even repugnance of such a mission. There was a buzz on the Hokage's intercom, who reached over to it, pressing the talk button asked, yes, Natsumi-san. Excuse me, Lady Hokage, her receptionist replied, but there are several Jonin out here, to turn in their team skills assessments. Very well, as soon as I dismiss those here in my office, send them in, please, Tsunade ordered. Hi, Lady Hokage, Natsumi answered, Tsunade looked up at those in her office, getting ready to be dismissed, all except, Kurunai-san, and the elders are dismissed, the elders may leave if they wish, or stay, it's up to them. All of the genin bowed to their sensei, then the Hokage and each of the elders, Sakura-chan and Naruto-kun, bowed to Hiyashi-sama, who as soon as she came close to him, fell beside his daughter, placing a paternal hand on her shoulder, filed toward the door, opening it, and left. Of the elders, only Tyuki elected to leave, he could have stayed, as an elder he had the clearance to be there for anything the Hokage allowed him to be, but ninja business was ninja business, he would not understand the significance of what he heard even if he stayed. Even if both his fellow elders, would have explained it to him, Meetings of this sort would go a lot faster without him, but he was learning a great deal about Konoha he never even suspected, and his ignorance was vanishing every day. As soon as they all left, several Jonin came through the office door and fell into line before the Hokage. Anko came in, and upon seeing one of her three best friends already there, came over and threw a familiar arm over her shoulders. Anko had a playful grin on her face, and whispered, So, Kurunai-chan, did you confess your feelings to your blonde-haired dream, she asked. Kurunai, who knew something like this was coming, when her friend came over to her grinning, like a cat that ate the cannery, answered with a quirked eyebrow, and, is that really all you wish to know, Anko-chan, Kurunai toyed with her. 
Don't you wish to know if you'll still have a roommate? After today, Kurunai leered, remember, if she failed my exam, she has to go back to her parents, since she'd still be a minor. Enko grinned, not being deflected in the slightest, I have faith in my unofficial student, Kurunai Chan, then stepping back, and looked at her friend, not to mention your relaxed state indicates you have no bad news to report. Which there would be, if you had to send your prospective boyfriend, back to the academy, and because he's blown all three of his chances at graduation, he would be disenrolled from the ninja program. Which means, if he wanted to be a ninja, he'd have to leave and become an enemy ninja, or a ronin, Enko reminded her friend, and neither of those two, are allowed within the village, unless it's to compete in the chunin selection exam. He passed, which means Sakura passed, she inferred, plus I saw them leaving as I entered, remember. They didn't have the dejected looks of those who'd lost everything they worked for. They were happy. Now, quit stalling, you only do that when you have something juicy to report. Kurunai sighed, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised you'd be able to see through my dissembling. You were one of T and I's best interrogators after all. Kurunai looked around, noting that they had some space between them and the rest of their colleagues, Shisui was conversing with his clan chief, and everybody else was consumed by their own talk. She lowered her voice anyway, I was lured into a trap and my new genin had me pressed against a cliff, I was boxed in, Naruto even had the forethought to line the top of the ridge with flash clones. He's got a head for strategy, that's for sure, anyway, I turned around to get ready to fight them, Kurunai answered, then with a smile of affection, by this time I had no problems passing them, they fulfilled the requirement for teamwork, but I was still too full of adrenaline to stop then. Plus, it would be a good way to determine their taijutsu skill, Kurunai added, before going on, I had my back to the cliff, thinking that they couldn't come at me from behind and surround me. Enko smirked, Naruto had been pretty much raised by all of them, he had learned to be sneaky from her, and she had taught him his earth techniques, he used the hidden in stone technique, didn't he, she sounded proud of herself. It looked similar, yes, though I think he may have modified it a little, Kurunai answered, he didn't just seem to be coming out of the cliff face, he appeared to have become, a part of it, like he had been the rock he came from. Kurunai blushed mightily, I didn't even feel him use his chakra, when he blew on my ear, it was all I could do not to turn around and snog him, her face was flushed as she finished her story for the events of her test. I didn't kiss him, for two, three, no four reasons, she grinned, while pushing her tongue between her teeth, firstly, it's against the military laws of Konoha for a student and teacher to be in a relationship. Secondly and thirdly, Hinata and Sakura both like him. And lastly, he had a kunai pressed to my throat, that's not the best time to be pressing romantic advances on him. Enko chuckled and nodded, maybe, but then that might have added more spice to the situation. Kurunai scoffed, if I need spice in a relationship that has not yet, and may never be realized, then I should just give up now, and spare myself the dramatic breakup. Enko nodded sagely in agreement, and answered blandly, you may have a point there, especially with two rivals in your way, not to mention, the law against fraternization between sensei and student. You could be stripped of your janin status for that, most don't come back from that, Enko reminded her friend. I may not be able to do anything now, but he wants to learn genjutsu, and be a chakra master, Kurunai informed her friend, that means time alone, together and there are plenty of ways to entice him, without either of us breaking the law. As for my two rivals, well they're my teammates and students first, Kurunai stated fiercely, that relationship comes before the first one, and we may also become friends. Anyway, the only one who may be my biggest obstacle is the Hyuga heiress, she's also expressed an interest in genjutsu, but only sensory genjutsu, which is usually the first section most people learn. They'll also be spending time alone with Naruto, so he can train them in lightning chakra, and help them research another of their chakra natures, that I'll let Sakura-chan tell you about in your apartment. At Anko's questioning look Kurunai answered quickly, it's need to know, and right now, nobody else in this office has a need to know, except you, Anko nodded at her friend's assertion. As for your question, the answer is yes, I did confess to him, sort of, Anko gave Kurunai a confused look, so she answered, I told him that blowing on my ear, though only for specific people, which I left out, she grinned wickedly, was the quickest way to get me into bed. Ah ha ha ha, Anko laughed out loud, I remember when another man did that to you in Market Square, Kurunai's eyes went cold as Anko continued to recall that event, 
you placed a genjutsu on him so demonic that he defecated in his britches. Kurinai developed a smile that was all teeth, as I said, only certain people will get me into their bed when they do that, everyone else will feel my wrath. Enko leered, as she continued to probe her friend's resolve, certain people, she needled. Kurinai just grinned, well, only one person at the moment, and it's been that way for over a year, since his last birthday. Let me take a wild guess, he's got blonde hair, like the sun, eyes like the blue sky, and is a ninjutsu prodigy, Enko assumed, but is interested in genjutsu, probably to challenge himself. Am I right, you are, the genjutsu mistress of Konoha confirmed, they were still whispering, though the emotion Kurinai displayed was pure and fiery. All right, the Hokage raised her voice, calling the meeting to order, all conversations ceased as she did so, I will call the team number and the team's Jonin will say if they passed or failed their genin team, understood. Hi, Hokage-sama, they all answered, in a crisp military manner. Tsunade began, Team 1, fail, Matsuoka Jonin stated. Team 2, the Hokage asked, fail, said Yuri Maki Jonin. Team 3, asked the Hokage. Yoshi Shimizu sighed in disappointment, fail. Don't be discouraged, you'll get another chance if you want it, Makoto reminded her. Team 4, Tsunade Senju asked, epic fail, Hayashi-san growled, then turned to the Uchiha matriarch. I'm not trying to insult your son in any way, Uchiha-sama, she stated with a bow, but while your son is handsome, I cannot understand the fierce loyalty he inspires in his fangirls. They were all so concerned about getting to be with Sasuke-san, they didn't even try to help each other. She turned to the Hokage, I know it's not my place, but they don't even deserve to be sent back to the academy, they would be a disgrace to Kunoichi if they passed. Noted, Tsunade stated, Team 5, failed, Kyosato asserted. Team 6, she asked, failed, Sung Min Kim declared. Tsunade looked at Kurinai, and asked, Team 7, pass, the crimson-eyed Jonin declared, then added, and I'd officially like to add the title, Kai no Buntai, Blood Squad, to our team's official file. Whatever for, one of the other Jonin questioned. Kurinai smiled, for reasons that the Hokage and the elders, only need to know, at the moment. Team 8, Tsunade moved forward, to get this done. Passed, Enko smiled, they're now my personal playthings, she stated rubbing her hands together. The rest of the Jonin, except Kurinai, shuddered at the thought of Enko being in charge of children. Tsunade just grinned, Team 10, Shisui stated, they pass, though barely, my biggest headache, will be to get that damn Nara to do anything but stare at the sky all the time. I had one on my squad, when I was a team sensei, Makoto advised, you've gotta put the fear of God into them, otherwise you'll never get anything, but the bare minimum from them. Thanks, Oba-san, Shisui nodded. That concludes this part of the meeting, Tsunade declared, those of you unable to pass a team, please go to the mission office and you'll pick up your next assignments. After they all left and the three with a team remained, waiting to hear what the Hokage had to say, well, this has been a momentous day, she said. The next Chunin exams are in six months, they'll be here in Konoha, she reminded them, now don't push them any further than absolutely necessary, but I'd like for Konoha to put up a good showing. Now, Kurinai, your name change for your team is approved, and so saying the Hokage wrote out the new name on the form, that read, Blood Squad, confirmed. For the last four months, Blood Squad, besides training, has been doing D-ranked missions, basically chores around the village. Everything from painting fences, tilling gardens, watching children for a noble clan, and catching Torah missions, the cat owned by the daimyo of Fire's wife, who seems to have a penchant for escaping from its mistress, and almost always finds its way to Konoha, where various genin try to catch the fiendish feline. The genin did not really mind, D-ranks were decent pay for the work they had to do, and with Naruto's Senko and Cage Bunshin, a day-long D-rank for most genin would only take a few hours for Blood Squad, which allowed them more time to train together, or do more D-ranks for the day, but the team was getting anxious to test themselves, against real enemies that were trying to kill them. They were walking toward the Hokage Mansion, and the genin were hoping to get their first C-rank mission. Kurinai looked at her students, Hinata and Sakura walking on either side of Naruto, chatting amiably together, and reflected back on the last four months. Flashback four months ago Naruto's progress in Senko Bunshin, allowed him to discover how to make them using normal, non-elemental chakra. This allowed him to make them more quickly, 
and in greater abundance than before, up to 2,000 clones at a pop. All with the same capabilities as the original Flash clone technique, including the durability, but most importantly, it meant he could teach his jutsu to anybody who wished to learn it, or anybody he wished to teach. The first person he taught it to was also the first person to ever show him love, his aunt Yugao, who expressed interest early on for him to teach her. He had already taught her, his true transformation technique, and surrogate substitution, now with flash clones, he felt he had sufficiently paid her back for taking him in when he was six, now he could just be her nephew. The trick, Yugao Chan, is in this hand sign, he told her as he demonstrated, he put his thumbs against each other, and allowed his other fingers to fall naturally at the junctions of the fingers and the rest of his hands. The formation produced a natural looking cylinder, that looked exactly like an eye socket. I call this, the oculus, he said, making sure she had it down before going on. He raised it to about the height of his chest, what you do is project your chakra through the center, as he demonstrated through actions what he spoke about, what happens is your chakra, gathers the photons you need to put together the clones, you'll notice a slight dimming in the immediate area around your projected path, then, the dimming he mentioned occurred, then just before total darkness, there was a flash of bright light, voila, your very own twin. Yu Gao was a good student, and of course, had more experience with chakra than her nephew, so she only needed the bare minimum of instruction, before she was able to pull off the jutsu like the professional she was. That did not stop her from jumping in celebration, when she made her first flash clone. I did it, Oh, Kami-sama, I did it, when she looked back at her perfect clone. Naruto looked at her smiling, he felt proud that he was able to teach her something else, she has taught him everything else he knew, including what it felt like to know love. Yugao Oba-san was the closest thing he had to a mother, and though he called her aunt, she was his mother in every way except name. His expression grew serious, and he spoke, I recommend starting out by using half your chakra, Naruto suggested, that way, you'll know exactly how many you can make, before chakra exhaustion sets in, Yugao nodded, and her clone dispelled in another flash of light. Naruto looked lost in thought, as he imparted his own experiences to his aunt, about Senko Bunshin no Jutsu, I can make them using other forms of EMR, so I'm covered on stealth missions, but if you need to be stealthy, I recommend making them out of line of sight of your prey, or they'll give you away. I would also, suggest learning the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, as a supplement to Senko Bunshin no Jutsu. They could be used interchangeably and only differ in durability to the latter, Naruto noted, then with a smile, added, I'm gonna trade teaching this to the Hokage, to learn it for myself, I think they would be totally useful for screwing up an enemy's confidence. His aunt just laughed at his wicked side, the feeling he had for her being his mother was absolutely reciprocated in her heart, if in the future she was lucky enough to have children, in her mind she has already been a mother. Naruto may not have come from between her legs, he was still very much her boy, Yugao prayed to Kami, and her sister, every time she slept, and thanked them for giving her, a son. After teaching his aunt, he followed through on trading the Senko Bunshin for the Cage Bunshin, to the Hokage, she even allowed Naruto to learn the Bunshin Dai Bakufu, now he had two clone techniques that could explode in an enemy's face. He practiced with them so much, he not only could make them silently, but even eliminated the telltale plume of smoke, and the kicker came when both sets of clones began to make each other. Naruto in addition to his other training, started practicing formation training, with one or the other types of clones, at first, but later, he began to mix the two types of clones together, creating a real-life version of the shell game. Naruto got so good at creating clones that he could recreate even his own smells, enough that he could fool Inu Nin, even the Inazuka breeds, which had lived with that clan so much, they had adopted their human partner's reasoning abilities. Naruto's other training proceeded apace, and he along with his teammates grew in strength, daily. Naruto created two invisibility techniques, the first one was C-ranked, he calls it, Bluff of the Blind Man. It follows the principles of taming the wave, by shunting all electromagnetic radiation around the user, it does not redirect into anybody's eyes, so the observer cannot see, conversely neither can the recipient, because it redirects all light away from the recipient, even that which was directed to his or her eyes. Naruto used it to practice using his other senses, and not to rely just on his eyes, this was a skill he taught his teammates. It was also where they found out that Kidoden, does cripple the effectiveness of the Byakugan, Hinata when he used it on her, was just as blind as his other three teammates. The second technique, 
which he called, unseen, followed the principles of breaking the spectrum. Naruto compressed the waves of EMR that struck him, but allowed the photons to retain their energy, since cells need the energy from the photons to conduct their operations, but as they rebounded from his body, he forced the waves to stretch almost flat, beyond even a radio wave's wavelength. This allowed Naruto to be invisible, truly invisible, he stood next to Hinata and her father for an hour, without revealing himself, and Itachi Uchiha could not see him either, he could have stolen anything, even jutsu ideas if he wanted to, but he kept himself to a strict code of ethics when using his keke tota. He did not peep on women in the hot springs, nor use his alternative visual spectrum to see through their clothes. He asked Hinata about her clan's rules of privacy, since all of them had a dojutsu that could aid them in seeing through solid objects. Naruto even spoke to the elder Uchiha, about when they use the Sharingan while in the clan compound or sparring with each other. The elders had been briefed on Naruto's light release, after he became a genin. The first month of Blood Squad's training was spent on a mixture of chakra control, physical exercises, that paled in anything they ever worked on at the academy, and team activities. Chakra control was essential for any ninja, from academy students to the Hokage, to even Sandame Sarutobi-sama, every ninja practiced some form of chakra control. The version of chakra control they learned at the academy, regardless of whatever variation was devised from it, is considered, the most basic exercise in the regimen. The more control one had over one's chakra, the more powerful and varied the capabilities of the ninja, whether it was for ninjutsu, genjutsu, or even taijutsu, a ninja's power came, not from the amount of chakra one had, but from controlling that chakra. The next day after the genin skills exam, Kurunai introduced them to vertical walking. They returned to the cliff from the day before, and she demonstrated, I've seen Yugao do that, but she would not teach it to me, Naruto groused. Of course not, Kurunai grinned from beside Naruto, she was using a flash clone, which Naruto had taught to her, Anko, and Hana-chan, Sakura and Hanada did not yet have the chakra reserves for either of Naruto's clone techniques. You know as well as I do that it's illegal for anyone to teach these techniques to academy students, only genin are allowed to learn them, per military law. Naruto still grumbled, I know, but it's not fair, he sulked. There was a smack to the back of the head for Naruto, from Kurunai, did you want some cheese with your wine, Naruto, she growled, getting in his face. You're an adult now, and adults don't bitch and whine about fair or unfair, they suck it up and get on with completing the exercise. Now, stop moping around like an Uchiha and get going with the exercise, Kurunai ordered, and no clones while training with your team, I won't let you rub it in their faces that you have an advantage they don't, understood, Genin Uzumaki. Naruto thoroughly reamed, popped to attention, and bowed, hi, Yuhi sensei, he bellowed, before bowing again, my apologies, Yuhi sensei, for wasting our time with this behavior, please forgive me. Get on with it, Genin Uzumaki, Kurunai barked. Hi, Yuhi sensei, Naruto barked back, then turning he hurried up to the cliff, and put his foot on it and began practicing the exercise. Kurunai watched him go, her gaze flicking occasionally up and down his body, and she felt a trickle run down her face from her nose, which she quickly wiped away. It would not do for the one she just chewed out to look back and see her with a nosebleed. They spent the first month of their fellowship, practicing vertical walking, and Naruto never complained again, he also took to heart what his sensei had about having an advantage his teammates did not have. As a method to keep himself humble, he followed Kurunai's order, even after that day, during chakra control training, it was Naruto the original that trained his chakra. He practiced daily and even when not with his team, the true Naruto practiced walking up and down the side of the Uzumaki main house walls. The chores he did around the house, that required vertical walking helped him train it as well, like washing the exterior windows, or touching up the paint where the wood was showing, were all him. The Flash and Shadow clones practiced his ninjutsu, the forms of his taijutsu, kenjutsu, and the calligraphy for his fuinjutsu. The Flash clones practiced sparring, empty-handed, or weapon-to-weapon, -weapon, while he was not trying to become a weapons master like Sakura, he may come across opponents wielding these weapons, and the best way to learn to fight against them was to learn to fight with them. His weapon of choice was the sword he wore on his back, to which he had added a seal from within the Uzumaki archive to his sword and ninja tool pouch. The seal allowed the kunai and shuriken in the pouch, along with his sword to be replicated perfectly when Naruto made either type of clone. 
He practiced with his sword every day, against his aunt when she was home, or against Senko Bunshin, morphed into varying body types, from the really large and powerful, to small and quick. Which is also how he trained his empty-handed, and Kanai Taijutsu techniques, after team training of course. Cage Bunshin trained his ninjutsu, and calligraphy. Stream, even better than the Byakugan, though she refused to elaborate. It was a Hyuga clan secret. Hanada developed her vibe sense, it takes the vibrations produced by all matter and energy, down to the molecular level and sends it to her brain, which interprets the information through four of her five senses, hearing, touch, taste, even her sense of smell. Her Byakugan has evolved her brain to only accept data from her dojutsu, but her brain it seems, works to harmonize with all of its parts, and the range she can extend it is in the same field of vision as her clan's dojutsu. Which at four months and two weeks later, has a range of up to three miles in all directions, for both of her keke genkai. The hard part was not getting her to listen to her new sensory technique, the hard part was getting her to trust it. Luckily, for her sleep and sanity, deactivating it was easy and they were able to teach her to control it within the first week of discovery, and by the end of that month it had become as instinctual for her as it is for Naruto's M field. Hanada, however, had been taught from a very early age, to give more regard to what her eyes tell her than what she gets from her other senses. Her vibe sense threw all of that out of the window, because now she had to learn to accept data coming from all of her other senses, which was difficult, because you do not throw out years of operant conditioning overnight. Naruto's discovery of Bluff of the Blind Men, helped Hinata overcome this conditioning, the rest of the team helped too. Naruto cast Blind Man's Bluff, over Hinata, so even if she resorted subconsciously to using the Byakugan, it would do her no good. Once she learned that, she began listening to what her other senses were telling her, she found her equilibrium fairly easy. The vibe sense gave her perfect proprioception, the brain's perception of the body, and its position and movement through space-time. Once Hanada was acclimated to using her senses while standing still, the team went on a hike through the forest, it was not the most treacherous path they could have taken, but it would definitely require you to pay attention. It was rough going for a little while, Blood Squad learned that Hinata had a penchant for swearing, especially when she bumped into things. It was Naruto, who admonished her to stop fighting her senses, just accept their stimulus as truth, Hinata-chan, Naruto rebuked her, though gently, let your mind do the work of understanding. That is what you told us to do when we started Zazen meditation with you, is it not, Naruto reminded her. Hanada gave him a dirty look, though she could not see him, she knew exactly where he was, that's easy for you to say, Naruto-kun, she glared, you can still see where you're going, your damn jutsu has rendered my family's dojutsu obsolete. Naruto just grinned, which Hanada could feel, and it made her turn her back to him with a huff, crossing her arms over her body with a stomp of her foot. Trust me, I've had to practice something similar to this when I trained my electromagnetic force field, in radio sense, he informed his teammate and friend, we're easing you into this, compared to what the Sandame and my own aunt did to me. They were throwing dull kunai and shuriken at me, by this time in my training, he added. Besides, you're doing it, Hanada, she turned to look at him to understand what he meant, when you started yelling at me, you were looking in my direction, not in the direction my voice was coming from, but right at me. I suspect you could have thrown a kunai or shuriken at me and probably hit me, if I didn't move, Naruto stated, as he circled around her, and she followed his path precisely, you're doing it even now as I speak to you. It seems when you stop thinking and just let things happen, your vibes work perfectly, it's when you try to take over that you mess up, am I right? Hanada sighed, very well, I'll enter Zazen and stop taking over, she did her best and finally learned to trust her vibes, she completed the hike a couple more times along the way, using different trails and routes. She even practiced vertical walking while blind, and once she did that, she was ready to practice more dynamic movements besides walking. They had Hinata practice her Juho Katas, all of them, until she was doing them the way they had seen her do them, when unencumbered. Once they were sure Hinata was doing her Katas as flawlessly as she always demonstrated, they decided to test something else. Serutobi carefully threw a kunai through a section that was close to her, but not directly at the Genin Kunoichi. Even while in the midst of her keita, they saw Hanada follow the path of the flying kunai with her head. Then, Kurunai threw a shuriken in such a way, that it curved close to Hanada, but stayed just out of her reach. Hanada, still followed its flight path, but continued to perform her keita, 
This was when Sakura threw a dull kunai directly at the Hyuga's exposed back. Hanada flowed out of the way but brought her palm around, and without looking in that direction, caught the kunai by the handle, making it look like the move was all a part of her current sequence of movements. This was when Naruto jumped silently, with a kunai of his own at the ready. He thrust the blade rapidly toward the kunoichi, while Hanada used the blade she had caught as a makeshift defense, deflecting and dodging the blonde's attacks with professional flair. It was during one deflection, that Naruto put his thumb, forefinger, and middle finger together, saying, Terashimasu, and flicked his fingers open. There was a kaleidoscope of colored light, and the world appeared in Hanada's eyes once more. Hanada did not lose a step, in her spar with her crush, her trust in her new senses was at such an instinctive level by now, that it barely even slowed her down when Naruto cancelled his Kidoden Jutsu. She must have understood subconsciously that she was now seeing the blonde, because, by a Kugan, she said, she began firing attacks at him even faster. Hanada was at a disadvantage, because she only had a dull kunai as a weapon, Naruto was not so encumbered, and there was a reason he was the actual rookie of the year for her class, but they never got a chance to face each other in taijutsu at the academy. Naruto's taijutsu style, the Uzumaki style known as Hapkyosu, was not very big on direct striking, but about neutralizing the force of an attack or redirecting it. It was meant to be used to kill larger foes, or those in armor, which emphasized joint manipulation, throwing, and counter-throwing, it was perfectly suited to be used with a bladed weapon in one, and, or both hands. Juho, was mostly palm strikes, meant to target specific organs, the movements were soft and fluid, to absorb the impacts of strikes, or not be there when the strike arrived, but its strength was to be used empty-handed. Both styles favored flexibility and leverage, over main strength, and only the Juhu's palm strikes and maneuverability, required any form of speed. Hanada knew, she needed to get some distance from Naruto, this is not how I want to get close to him, her only chance was to not allow him to control the flow of the battle. Hanada began to maneuver around Naruto at a quicker rate, redirecting his thrusts and parrying his very, precisely controlled slashes, his technique is flawless, she salivated for him, until she saw and felt him relax. That meant he had discovered her pattern, which was what she had been waiting for, because she put a deliberate halt to her current movements, which made him rush ahead of her, before he could reverse course, she rushed in behind him and slammed a chakra and adrenaline-fueled palm into Naruto's right flank, which was not enough to take him out. Naruto, knowing he was about to be struck relaxed the muscles in his abdomen, dissipating the force enough to keep him in the fight, but not enough to prevent himself from being pushed away from his opponent. Naruto saw it, Hanada threw that unsharpened kunai directly at him, it bewildered him at first, she knew it would be useless against him, even if he allowed it to hit him, it would not have done any permanent damage. Before it left her hand, he thought, he saw the blade become distorted and heard a little crack of what sounded like thunder, then it was speeding toward him and it was not moving through the air too fast for him to sidestep the knife. Hanada suddenly charged toward Naruto, she moved too fast for him to do anything, so he set himself for the impact, but instead of her whole body colliding with his, she literally ran up Naruto's front. She pushed off using a kick to his head from both legs, that attack did knock him over and he was even seeing stars. Naruto-kun, is a very good ninja, Hanada thought as she rebounded off Naruto's face, she backflipped through the air letting her arms spread out to balance her, while she flew through the air, if he has any drawback, it's that he's too good for his age, he's so good that he sometimes gets cocky, and taken with his own cleverness. As Hanada arced through the air, the ground moving beneath her, he's not arrogant or anything, doesn't view anybody as beneath him, but sometimes he thinks he's Kami's gift and nobody his age can beat him. That's the sort of thinking that could lead to his demise, and I refuse to allow that to happen if I can prevent it, I may not have trusted my Shindo no Kankaku vibe sense until now, but I have been practicing other applications to use with my Shindoden. I've been incorporating them in with my Juho style, I've learned to vibrate my body at unheard of speeds, not the speed of light or anything, that might actually cause a black hole for all I know, that much accumulated mass in one place. If that didn't do it, the first time I tried to move, adding kinetic force to my already near infinite mass, definitely would. No, I'll probably never try for, let alone achieve vibration at light speed, but I've definitely reached supersonic speeds, Mach 3 at least, with better chakra control I could probably reach Mach 6. I can vibrate all or parts of my body at Mach 3, which adds plenty of mass, I think today, 
I'll do it to my whole body, really drive it home from my bay, that were clever too. Hanada landed a few feet back from her position, Vibe Freak 3, Shindo Hinda San, she declared, and her entire body began vibrating at three times the speed of sound. Hanada was barely visible, and the second her vibrating body broke the sound barrier, there was a sonic boom, which could be heard all over the village, and broke several windows in the village. Eight trigrams, twin palms, came her now distorted voice, as she lunged, driving both palms forward. They came into contact with something invisible, the force shocked it out of its unseen technique, and there was an approximation of pain on the Naruto look-alike's handsome face, before the force of Hinata's attack, destroyed his Senko Bunshin, in a rainbow shower of waves and particles. By this time, the real Naruto was sitting up, as the QB finished healing him, he was looking at her with astonishment written all over his face. Hanada just grinned, you may be invisible, Naruto-kun, she answered his questioning face, but we still have our other senses, as someone who trained his senses with the Inazuka, you should be ashamed, for not taking better precautions with the other markers of your passage. You still move the air around you, when you travel, don't you know? There was a humorous laughter coming from her right, they looked and they're standing with a shocked Kurenai sensei Sakura-san, was the third Hokage who was clapping his hands. He walked over to stand next to the Hyuga heiress, you are quite correct, my dear, he agreed with her, and looked at his surrogate grandson, he may have been unseen, but he is still there, he is just hiding behind a curtain. Naruto stood up and marched toward the heiress, when he got there he promptly bowed, thank you, Hinata-chan, I fear that I had become cocky, then he gave her a self-deprecating smile, before adding, thank you for taking the time to pop my oversized head. Yes, here is an agreed, and I believe congratulations are in order, Hinata, though she was overjoyed and embarrassed about the praise, looked confused, you are the first person, besides Naruto-kun to ever destroy a Senko Bunshin, and the first time was by accident, over a month ago. Naruto shuddered, as he put his arm around his teammate, after getting her permission of course, man, that last attack was something else, it's a good thing flash clones don't bleed. Imagine the mess it would make if you used it on an animal. Hanada laughed, I don't have to imagine, I know, one of the first times I tried that attack, was against a side of beef in one of the Hyuga meat packing plants. I wanted to see what kind of damage I could do, the two boys, grandson and grandfather looked at her wrapped with fascination, as she continued, it destroyed the already dead animal, there wasn't anything left of the thing when I was done. You're also right in the mess it made, I had to clean for hours, and of course pay the owner for the lost time and money the product would have gained for him. Kurenai and Sakura had started over with the sandame, when something else caught their eyes. They made their way over to a tree, sticking out of that tree was a handle, the hilt of a kunai. It was the kunai, Hinata had thrown to distract Naruto from her real attack, how did she do this, Sakura wondered, this kunai was as dull as a spoon, we did that to make sure we did not hurt Hanada, if she wasn't as sure of her vibe sense as we believed. Kurenai thought for a moment, and realization dawned on her face, remember when the kunai became distorted, right before she threw it. Sakura nodded, and Kurenai continued, I noticed the same distortion around Hanada's body, just before she destroyed the flash clone, from the alteration of her voice I know she was vibrating at supersonic speeds. Well, if she can do that with her body, which is more fragile than metal, why wouldn't she be able to do it with the metal of the kunai, she reasoned. Sakura walked around to the back of the tree, and gasped, Kurenai sensei you have got to come see this, she exclaimed. Kurenai hurried around to her student and added her own gasp, while taking a startled step back with an arm over her heart in shock. Because, while the front of the tree remained largely intact, the back, where all the unspent energy was released had been demolished. The tree was one of the older trees of the forest, which means it was one of the thicker examples of its species in this part of the forest. The entire back half of the tree had been blown away, there were splinters the size of her pinky, sticking into several trees at least 20 yards behind it, and not just into the bark, there were some of them actually protruding through the entire wood of the tree. If Hanada can do this with a blunt kunai, what the hell could she do with a properly sharpened one, or a properly sharpened shuriken, Sakura wondered out loud. That's nothing, her sensei told her, with her Byakugan, along with her vibration techniques, and a Sinban in her hand, with any of her chakra natures she'll become a walking force of nature. It'll be perfect for her sensory genjutsu training, Kurenai mused, as her sensei, it's my duty to open her eyes to these things. Let's go, 
We have five more months before the Chunin exams, but I won't recommend our team until we've begun C rank missions, Kurinai stated as she walked to her two students. The Sandame had already departed, and we have a lot of work to do before I'll believe you're ready. Sakura Chan was not only surviving, the distance between her mother and father, she was thriving without being under their thumb. While she still acted like a lady in most situations, she had been under the influence of Anko Midarashi, who had succeeded in relaxing the strict upbringing the Rosette took from the Harunos. Conversely, Sakura succeeded in doing the one thing to Anko, that nobody had ever done before, make her mind her manners. While still a rough, earthy, uncouth character, which anybody who has spent a good deal of time with her knows, is just a defense, coping mechanism to try keeping people at a distance, after what her sensei did to her, which she does not even remember. It has not worked, because despite her nature, Anko Midarashi has developed a whole platoon of precious people, that will stick by her and defend her until death takes them from her. The opposite is also true with Anko in how she regards her precious ones. None have become quite as dear to the snake mistress of Konoha, as the pink-haired Kunoichi, she took under her wing at the age of 10. They have moved in together, and it seems more like they are long-lost sisters than roommates. The dynamics of the living situation are private, and not fodder for discussion here, but Anko, in addition to training her own team, which since they all come from clans, largely consists of shoring up their taijutsu styles, learning chakra affinities, Kiba is fire, Sasuke is lightning, and Shino is earth, and getting them started with genin-level chakra control. She mostly had them practicing teamwork exercises and physical fitness training, during team meetings, they spent less time training together than the other teams and had a professional relationship, at most. Alternatively, they spent more time on D-rank missions, than training, and by mutual consent, had Sasuke as their lead, Kiba was a natural follower though not a bootlicker, and Shino did not really care who led. Sasuke was pretty good at it, he seemed to be a natural leader, and all in all they were a pretty strong team. But, Anko spent most of her and Sakura's free time, training Sakura in taijutsu, and introducing her to different weapons, mostly staff and sword techniques, but also in the use of spears, double sword techniques, which paired well with her storm art training, but more on that later, mother and son Cho Kent butterfly sword techniques, three section staff training, horse bench training, which was about finding and using everyday objects as weapons, and twin rod training, which also paired well with Arashi no jutsu. Enko introduced Sakura to a different style of martial discipline, which perfectly utilized the sensual, flexibility of hubby's style, but added loads of power to her strikes and tons of versatility, it's called, Chuan style. The essence of the style is five attacks in an instant, three heights in eight directions, long and short range attacks, flexible foot and legwork, and all simultaneously accomplished in a single second. Sakura acquired first class, powerful kicks, but was in no way restricted to kicking alone, the footwork is elusive and flexible, with powerful, short-range fists. Training in Chuan concentrated on building a tremendous amount of stamina, as well as development of power and flexibility in the legs. Sakura would learn one posture at a time, until all three heights and eight directions were mastered. Only then, would the next posture be taught. Weight training, iron rings, and stone locks were used, in addition to Naruto's GR seals, for the development of strength, stamina, and speed. Sakura practiced all of her techniques on Senko Bunshin, and Trees, which was a terrific, training aid to building power into her punches and kicks, because she passed through a stage in her training, she had to develop a considerable amount of power before progressing further. Sakura started out, learning basic hand patterns and stances, which developed whipping power and spiraling motions, then she learned kicks, developing the seven sides of the foot. After that, she learned balance, rooting, and how to develop power from the waist, she learned to harmonize hands and feet, and developed flexible stepping methods, and handwork, learning what she called, Kitsui Te Hoho, which made her hands and feet by themselves deadly weapons, without using chakra. Sakura also learned Kurinai's family taijutsu style, Aikijujutsu, whose movements were so similar to Uzumaki's style taijutsu, as to make him and Yugao, both wonder if there might be a familial link, between the Yuhi and the Uzumaki clans. Sakura spent a couple of days per week at the hospital, learning how to be a medical ninja, Hinata and Naruto accompanied her for certain classes but not others, the hospital was Sakura territory, and they both understood that. She saw her best friend, Ino there, which was the only time they had to spend together, with their busy schedules. Ino was the only person, 
Sakura told about her actions in the academy, and her attitude toward Naruto. Ino knew about Anko, and their training together, the Yamanaka helped Sakura with her deception of her parents by fomenting a pseudo-rivalry for Sasuke's affections, of which, only Ino's feelings for him were genuine. Well, as genuine as they can be for a preteen girl, which in Ino's case, lasted until her third day on her team, and no she did not switch her affections to Shisui, he was in her opinion an old man, her attentions were now, firmly affixed upon another boy. Kiba was also training to be a medical ninja, he always enjoyed working with all animals, not just dogs, he hoped to learn enough to work with his sister, Hannah, at her veterinary clinic. On the same week, the first month went into the second, Naruto and Sakura were walking on their way to meet Anko and Yugao. They had been training together working on their Keke Genkai, Naruto his three, and Sakura's one. Naruto, to maintain his Keke Tota's status as an S-ranked secret, could only practice his Kidoden at home. Naruto was developing something he could use with his magnet release. It was going to be used with Sinban, he was not sure what to even call it yet, but he would have it ready for the upcoming Chunin exams. He was also developing a special, throwable container, that could be used with his explosive chakra, they might be closer to completion, in three more months. Naruto's plasma chakra was the most useful, and the most developed of his Keke Genkai, and what was truly exciting for both members of Team Blood, was both of their bloodlines, were mirror twins of each other. The only real differences between the two, were purely cosmetic, the spectra of light they emitted were different. Plasma release jutsu always ran the gamut between red and green, storm release jutsu were always running between green and violet spectra. Other than that, they were perfect twins of each other, Sakura was phenomenal at finding variations in the jutsu Naruto already created. Naruto showed her how to make a plasma blade, she took the idea a step further, and created storm whips, with differing variations of whips, from Kato Nine Tails to bullwhip configurations. He showed her, his most devastating plasma technique, which he called a ruby-eyed god, where he spun the plasma into a very compact, angry scarlet sphere, they were out at training ground 100, the farthest point away from Konoha one could get before becoming a missing nin. There was a mountain down range of the couple, there were several cylindrical holes drilled through it, you could see sunlight coming through from those holes. Naruto twisted around and thrust his palms toward the crag, a beam of energy shot away from the shinobi's hand and headed straight for the rock. When it struck, something Naruto was not expecting happened, the top portion of the mountain, just went away, vaporized, converted from matter to energy in an instant. That was expected, what was not expected was the amount of the mountain that was destroyed, he had expected a neat little hole, not Kami's wrath. He moved back through his memories, and compared it to previous episodes, which is where he found the difference, in the past the beam would shrink in circumference the closer it came to the mountain, and the further it went from him. It retained its intensity, but reduced in size, the only damage the mountain received was a small hole. Naruto chuckled in derision, and said, this is the difference between the academy chakra control exercise, and what we're learning now. Watch every dime, she did have rent to pay after all, and such extravagant things, like exotic weapons and armor, were an expense she could not justify. Then she heard what Naruto-kun said, What, Naruto-kun, I don't need your charity, she snapped. I'm not giving it to you out of charity, Naruto answered, You're my family, friends and teammates, and my affections for all three of you ladies is growing. You've all more or less confessed your feelings for me, but I can't choose either of you because that wouldn't be fair to Kurenai-sensei. I'm not going to date any of you, until Kurenai-san, is no longer our sensei, due to the zero tolerance fraternization law, between sensei and student, she can't be as open with her affections for me as the rest of you. So, this is my way of evening the playing field, and answering all your feelings for me without, endangering her career, and because I'm getting myself a set, as well as, Yugao Oba-chan, shows that I regard your lives to be at least equal to my own, and hers. Sakura's eyes had gone wide at the level of Naruto's thought process, he is so thoughtful, he's pretty much just told me that he feels the same for us as we do for him, but he's doing it in a way to protect us, and conceivably give all of us a fair chance to win his heart. Flashback and now Naruto presented all of us, the dragon male on the same day, and told us the same thing he told Sakura, when we asked him why he was doing it. I didn't think I could love him any more than I already did, but the thoughtfulness of the armor, his consideration for our feelings and making sure we all had a fair chance to court him, not to mention protect my career, 
proved how wrong I was. When I look down at my armor, I can't help but feel as if he is holding me in his arms, it makes me feel safe wearing his armor. I then look down to my thigh to the twin hanbo, that is a symbol from my kunoichi students, to my shinobi student, and to me, that we are under a truce in regard to pursuing a romantic relationship. Until I am able to make a fair campaign to win Naruto's heart, when we are no longer bound by a teacher-student relationship. The Hokage's office there was a knock on the door, come, the door opened, and Blood Squad filed into the Hokage's office. There was a Tsunade sitting behind her desk, which was empty of the dreaded paperwork, except of course for mission reports, and incomplete missions. There was, off to the side, another Hokage desk with another Tsunade, which was cluttered with all of the paperwork, the real slug princess, did not want to do. Tsunade raised her head and smiled, Ah, Team Blood, are you here for another D rank? She said waving her hand in front of a stack of scrolls, as you can see, we're overflowing with them. Kurenai was wearing her dragon mail armor, under her blouse, with only the right sleeve visible, a very broad material, which resembles bandages with a pattern on it, similar to those of rose thorns. Her arms and legs were also completely covered by Naruto's dragon mail armor, and she wears the Konoha forehead protector, and regular shinobi sandals. She wore makeup consisting of red lipstick and purple eye shadow. Naruto and Hinata had their balaclavas down, and Sakura had unwrapped her shimog, their own dragon armor covering all exposed skin, from the neck down. One amenity to the armor is with just a little chakra, the wearer could add a few cosmetic changes, such as altering the color and adding a specific design, or an emblem to it. For instance, Kurunai made the armor over her chest and down her left leg, the same shade of red as her right sleeve, while extending the design and color of the rest of her clothing, to her left arm and right leg. Sakura's armor was a solid, red hue, which was slightly lighter in color, than her sensei, Hinata had chosen a plum-colored hue, and Naruto had decided on an alternating, scale pattern, that continued the blue camouflage pattern on his shirt. Only one of them, had decided to use any kind of spiking, Hinata kept the backs of her hands and fingers, down to the first knuckle covered in small spikes, which she mostly uses to conduct her Raiden Chakra. Though Naruto had placed special storage seals on the palms of their armor, that allowed them to call forth their ninja tools, in either hand, ready to use at a moment's notice, thus none of them wore ninja tool pouches. They were all dressed in the genin uniforms, they had chosen before becoming a team, though to reflect a united front, all of them including Kurenai, were wearing crimson forehead protectors, in the same spots they chose to at the academy. In another act of unity, but for a different, more personal reason, strapped to their left, outer thighs, all of Blood Squad, including their sensei, had outfitted a pair of hanbo. They were the Kunoichis's answer gifts to Naruto's armor, they all chipped in and bought them from the same weapon store as the armor. Using chakra, the wielder could transform the hanbo, into various bludgeons, from nunchaku, to bow staffs of various lengths, even a pair of kama with the blades growing from the haft. On Sakura and Naruto's right hips, in a leather belt and holster was a strange, L-shaped contraption, called a blaster. They were made of chakra metal according to Naruto, who had the device commissioned from a weaponsmith, and aided them, in aiming their respective bloodlines with pinpoint accuracy. Sakura wore a shoulder harness and on the upper section of her chest, outboard of her breasts, one pointing down, and one pointing up were her sigh. Kurenai looked at her students, and noted their bearing, waiting for her to speak for them, they are disciplined, they might just be ready, she thought, Hokage-sama, it is my humble belief the Blood Squad, is ready to accept their first c rank mission, Kurenai declared. She was doing her best to conceal her pride in her kids, as she has come to see them, for truly, she feels like a proud mother about to let go of her babies. Tsunade finished her private assessment, and agreed with a nod, if you believe it, then so do I, she buzzed her intercom, Natsumi, please send in Tazuna san. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, the next part will be out soon.